Hello, hello, hello. We're gonna be skipping the intro for now since we've already done that earlier, but thank you still for giving all your tickets. Even if the tickets are a one per day thing, right? Let's go here, let's go to Optox, let's see. Yay, hello. <laughs> hello. Didn't you guys know this? The tickets are a one per day, one per day ticket thing. Like you buy a ticket and then you freaking, what do you call this? You have access for the rest of the day. <laughs> you never tell. Uh, uh, been paying for nothing. What? Uh, what? No intro. You guys want to see the intro? Really? But we did it earlier. We already did it earlier in the Silent Hill. But I guess. But I guess. But I guess. <sighs> want to see the intro first before me? The heck is going on here? Here's our freaking intro. Okay then. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed your intro. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your intro. Okay. Okay. Damn. You actually fought for your intro. Damn. Wow. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed your intro, right? I am a generous puppeteer. I've been generous ever since day one. Okay. So. You're welcome. You're welcome. But hello, everybody! I Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, not everybody was able to watch a Silent Hill one. So now you go to Octox and you... Okay, you, you get the intro. Okay, fine. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay! I got it. I got it. Okay. But, welcome to Octox with Octavio. I am the opulent octatonic operatic puppeteer of Bounty Hunter Unit Armist of Holostar's English. My name starts with an O and ends with an O. My name is Octavio. How is everyone doing? How are you doing? Welcome to Octox with Octavio. Iroha, Angie, and Pouty. Mm. Uh, can I pout? Can I even pout? What's my pout? That's my pout. <laughs> You're still stun locked? What? But hello, everybody. Let's see. Let's see. It's, let's see if I can get any newer names, new names that I haven't said in chat yet. How fast? Can you fart? Broken025, how are you? Welcome. Heavily salted fish. 
I love your name, Rizki Sadar. How are you as well, Man Mar Mar Mangano? Morgano? Damn, Morgana Angelo. How are you? What's going on, Iwashi? What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Uh, Kuma Shock. Great name, Kuma Shock. How are you? Uh, let's see, three more. Three. Stoli, what's up, Rifu? How how's it going? And one more, one more. Right, Nexus. And Georgia Manderson. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Also, thank you so much for the one month membership. I'll talk to X. Keep up the good work, Octavio. Thank you so much, Comment King. You are a Comment King. Welcome, welcome. But everybody, to the new and old Octoposse, the new and old puppets in chat right now. Welcome. You're always welcome to the theater. You just need to present your ticket every time. And now that I've revealed, it's one ticket a day. So it's like, just imagine, this ticket is more valuable than a buffet ticket. Because for buffets, you go to a buffet, you ticket, I mean a buffet, like one buffet order or whatever. Because you go to a buffet and that's like two hours only, right? Two hours only, then you go home. You can't, you can't go past two hours or something like that. Like that. But for this, literally, you buy a, you buy a ticket to the theater in the morning, 8 a.m. Then you have access it, access to it the whole day. Now, whether a show is ongoing or not is a different story altogether. Because you can literally go into the theater and just sit down and be like, "Ooh, wow, it's really cold in here. It's really cold in here." Then go out. You know, if you need shelter from the rain, just go into the theater. But ah, it's like a church. <laughs> It's like a church. Now that I think about it, you can just go in. But the difference is this theater is air conditioned. It's air conditioned. So it's great. One of the things I've always wanted to see is that if one I always wanted to try, not really try, but one of the things I've always wanted to theorize, could you possibly just live outside, live without a house outside by just gaming like the different systems everywhere? For example, um, do you have overnight pass tickets for the theater? I guess we can have overnight uh, tickets as well. Maybe a spa. We can make a spa inside. Uh, <laughs> criminal, I guess South Elysium. <laughs> I was wondering, so you go outside, right? You go outside. Then one place that you can stay is the buses. The, no, I'm, I'm not even talking about the busy. The buses, right? So... Because here's what I notice: If you ride a bus, you can go into a bus and wait for it to go, right? You can wait for it to depart. Now, when it departs, you can literally just alight from the bus and find another bus to go in and sit down. You can even watch movies the whole time, right? Now, the question is, where do you get the food? Where can you get free food? I guess you can get free food in like a freaking if there's a taste test going on in your grocery. Infinite bus strat, <laughs> infinite bus, infinite bus strat. Yeah, free samples. You can get, you can get actually get food, right? Wedding event, just spawn the food. Yeah, you can. Let's see, where did I? I actually got this idea because we got free food at one point, somewhere. Oh no, even in the bus. The, Right, they, there are people who go inside a bus and sell stuff. They sell, they give you like free samples of bukopai. They give you free samples of bukopai. So you can literally live inside a bus. The infinite bus strat. Now, the question is, uh, how do you take a bath? How will you take a bath every day? Um... They give book of pie on bus? Yes, they do! They do! They give samples. You never experienced that? What? <laughs> well, I guess it depends on the bus, maybe. I don't know which bus is that. It's not every bus, but you need to choose. You need to choose the bus. There's samples? Yeah! They literally are like, Hey! Book of pie, book of pie, book of pie! Then... Actually, now that I realize it, it's not it's, it's not everybody. It's not every book of pie seller that gives a sample. Now that I think about it, yeah, because there are some that are kind of annoying, and they're like they literally put the free book of pie in front of your face, 
And I'm like, nah, I can't. <laughs> but there are some who don't. There are actually most that don't. So you need to be smart. You need to be smart. You need to find those buses that have free food on them. Next, where do you take a bath every day for free? Maybe you can't take a bath every day for free, but maybe you can scrounge up enough money to buy a, I don't know, anytime fitness, <laughs> anytime fitness <laughs> oh, freaking subscription or whatever. And you can always go there and uh, get a bath, <laughs> anytime fitness. <laughs> it's not free. It's not free. I don't know. I have no idea. The beach. So good. <laughs> it, it'll probably be easier if in... Um, you know, there's a thing in Korea, right? At least from what I know from Korean dramas. Is that a lot of people... Uh, you can, I think you can go to a spa. Like in the middle of the night or something. And literally spend... spa. It's a spa or sauna. Yeah, spa or sauna or something like that. You can spend the whole night there. Get a bath. Get a coffee. Coffee milk. Or something. Or the egg. Egg thing that you can eat. Egg with soy sauce. I don't know. <laughs> I've just been trying to theorize. How you could possibly be outside and live comfortably the whole the whole day. But the first thing that comes to my mind really is the infinite bus strat. If you're, if you're smart about it. You can literally just move from bus to bus. And sit for a few minutes, especially those buses that take so long to fill up before they go. You can literally spend like an hour there inside a bus and watch whatever movie is c coming on. You can only watch one hour of that movie though. Then you go away from the bus, you go, go to the next bus, then you you don't even need to buy a ticket. Um, <laughs> Pasig River, Mariki. No, 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 not those rivers. <laughs> Rain is a free shower, yeah. The mall, can you take a bath in a mall? You can take a bath at McDonald's. Te technically, you can take a bath anywhere, I guess. You can take a bath in any <laughs> comfort room that you go to. <laughs> technically. It's just a matter of if you're brave enough to do it. <laughs> Bleach is still ongoing on Bluey's bus. <laughs> yeah, go to like McDonald's and turn on the sink and be like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the maintenance staff staff are standing right there, but can they really stop you from your first few first few splashes of water? <sighs> right? So the strat here. Now they the first the first they can. You literally the first one is when they get alerted that you're taking a bath. So whee! So yeah, now you're wet. Now if they if they get to you. That's when you go to the next door restaurant, then go to their comfort room, and then continue your bath there. And hopefully, you can find a restaurant where it's like, where people aren't looking, or maintenance people aren't there. Right? <laughs> Someone took a bath in McDonald's, I remember that was a pretty- Really? Really? The heck? Is this preparation when we go truly broke? You know, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. All the time. Right? <laughs> what are we even talking about? <laughs> what if you get caught? They can't do any... What, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna call the police? Nah, they're just gonna kick you out. You're gonna be fine. They're gonna call the police. They have no time to do that. What, they're gonna go to the police? They're gonna do the blotter thing? Blotter. And then they're gonna... Talk to the police about what you did, did. Nah, they don't have time for that. Public nudity? I mean, you can take a bath with your clothes on. Hey, Ruse, what's wrong with a little Baja bath? Yeah. <laughs> for a Baja bath, you need to buy the Baja Blast, though. And that's expensive. So I feel like there are certain places where this can work. Um, especially those places where you can get a sauna. You know, for a full night of the, at the sauna for cheap. I think that'll be great. Right? How about a flood? I mean, 
flood your... There's nothing to do when there's a flood. <laughs> Actual Baha. Baha. Like flood. Flood is free. True. But the water and floods are not. Ah, no. No. I mean, as a last resort, I guess. Maybe. Go to the places where it's raining and just... Just... <laughs> go on your phone. Turn on the turn on Google Maps and check... Where is it raining right now? <laughs> then, go, then go travel there on with, via the bus, via the infinite bus strat. As if I don't have a cup with a hollowed out bottom connected to my backpack full of empty, two empty water tanks for borrowing infinite soda from fountains. Oh my god! What? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. D like. Where was this? Where was this? Where was this place? Uh, SNR. Uh, SN... SNP. SNP. Right? If you buy a soda in SNP, that's basically infinite soda in SNP. Right? Yeah, you just buy the cup for you to... Technically, I... I is, it, is that bottomless in SNP? Right? What does SNP stand for? I don't know. SNP. It's it's the it's the grocery. It's bottomless. So literally, go to SNP, buy a soda there, then have a bunch of containers in your bag for you to pour the soda into. Buy at least times ten of the amount that you paid for. I mean, get. Get at least times 10 of the amount you're, you pay for. Right? There are options. There are definitely options. But the the biggest hurdle for you here is to find a way to clean your clothes and stuff like that. And still look presentable. Because there are some establishments that are going to be like, Oh, you can't come in. You can't come into this. That was kinda, you're kind of stinky. Right? That's the biggest problem. You need to find a way for you to look like clean and respectable, you know? Uh, now, how can you do that? That's difficult. That's really difficult. Ah, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out soon. Don't worry. But everybody, welcome to Octox with Octavia. <laughs> All right, Octox with Octavio is my weekly Zatudan show where we talk about the week, the crazy week that went by. Then we answer some uh, member-submitted questions, and then we go into the news, a little bit of news, and then more member-submitted questions, and then we finally reveal the schedule for next week. And oh boy, oh boy, 20-minute 20, 20 homeless strats tangent. <laughs> I'll figure that out. Soon enough, because I remember I was in a bus the other day and I was like, oh, so this is how you do it. This is how this is how you live outside. <laughs> but I can't remember it right now. I can't I can't extract that information right now. I I could have sworn I already figured everything out, even the food situation. I was done with homeless strats. No, we're not gonna go back. We're done. We're we're done with that. Now, if anybody makes a question of that, maybe we can revisit that. <laughs> so, let's check out. You can't stream without a house. I mean, so you need to be prepared. You know, life can throw you curveballs sometimes, right? If life gives you lemonade, make lemons out of them. You know, you gotta make the best out of everything. Now, the question is, did I do this properly? <laughs> there we go. I did it properly. Yes, that's a schedule. It's really big. So this is our previous schedule. There. It's covering my face. There we go. Let's move myself a little bit to the right here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah, if life gives you lemonades, make lemons. Easy. Okay. All right. I witnessed. <laughs> so, this week was pretty fun, huh? It's actually... I was like, damn, I'm not doing a lot this week, huh? I feel like I didn't do a lot this week. 
I feel very refreshed and invigorated. So, we started Monday with the collab with Ruse. Finally, our first one-on-one collab, Bread and Fred. We got, we didn't get far into the game. How far did we get? I'm not even sure. I think, what, one-fourth? That feels like forever ago now. That collab, Red and Fred, feels like forever ago now. That was really fun. Um, it was so funny. We played at two hours of it. We, we gave up. <laughs> um, it's hard because of the, the delay on the other side. Yeah, we beat it. We beat it. We beat it! Because of the, there was delay, but we definitely beat it. But it was super fun. I love that game. Um, I wish we could play it in an off collab setting, though. You know, maybe in the future, maybe in the future we could we could do that. Um, we could definitely beat that easy. We're both freaking heckin' amazing gamers like that. Real platformers, easy. Platformers are the easiest games ever. Not really, but I love platformers, and uh, this was pretty. This was pretty great. I like the concept of it. Uh, it's just the lag. Actually, I remember when we were preparing preparing the game before a stream. I was like, do we know if this is even online multiplayer? Because I remember I pitched to Ruse before the idea of a Cuphead uh, Cuphead 2 player run. But then we found out it was just local multiplayer. So I was like, ah, crap. I love Cuphead. And that was around the time also when Gibby did his friggin' one hour Cuphead run. Was that one hour or two hour Cuphead run? Something like that. Uh... But I do want to try Cuphead in a two-player setting. I beat Cuphead uh, like once in a one-player setting. Then they came out with a freaking with a two-player uh, update. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Cuphead solo? I've already done it. Should I do it again? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. However, the problem is Gibby already sped sped run it, sped ran it. So. <laughs> 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 the better run is already there. It's already in. <laughs> it's already on the internet. Are they making a Cuphead too? Slow run it. <laughs> let's do a DDDXP of Cuphead. Let's get in the. Let's get into the lore of Cuphead. Right? Wasn't there a game that looks like Cuphead that's coming out? It was like Mouse Game. Wretch. Uh, Steamboat Willy look. FPS. Mouse. Official game early gameplay reveal trailer. Have you guys seen this? I'm not gonna, don't play it. Don't play it. Don't play the damn thing. Again, I'm gonna share this. I'm just gonna share this on in chat. But know that we are. I am not sponsored by whoever made this game or anything. Right there, it's there. You you guys can check that out if you want to. That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh. I hope we can play it in the future. Um, just because of the aesthetic. I don't know if the game is going to be there. But yeah. Uh, so, that was Bread and Fred. Then we did the Scuff It making. We finally made... We were supposed to make four Scuff It. But... It's interesting. Yeah, it looks really interesting. I, I really like the... I really like the look of it. It's an FPS. It's set in the 1940s. Actually, remember, remember our... Remember our uh, Among Us game with Mary? One of the VTubers there, I think, what was it in Pumpkin Pumpkin Potion or something? Their aesthetic is literally 1940s. 1940s. Like, it's so good. And her aesthetic is like consistent all throughout. Only the games are not. <laughs> but all the assets, all her backgrounds, her model, even the way she talks is very consistent 30s rubber hose style yes it's so good that's so good there's so many creative freaking vtubers out there it's great it's great to see right so menchi scuff it we made four we were planning to make four but we ended up making seven that was crazy so we made seven scuff it that's great members um if you haven't watched that definitely please do um, it's just it's just a fun little stream that you can put in the background if you want to. Um, I need to post. I need to take pictures. I need to do photo shoots of the scuff it so I can post it on the community tab so you guys can share it if you want to. And 
I still don't have a new jar. I'm trying to find a jar that's big enough, but still looks nice. So I might put you guys in a temporary jar for now. Because I do have a jar here that can fit everybody, but it's it's plastic. It's not really nice looking unlike the first one. I do want to get something better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Daiso. Maybe. Maybe I should go to Daiso. I want to get a glass jar. Definitely. Um, but we're going to put you in temporary housing for now. <laughs> temporary housing. So, then the next day, Tuesday, uh, we played Fall Guys. Puppet versus Puppet Massacre in Fall Guys on Twitch. That was so fun. That was so fun. And I found out later... Remember, Betel came back, right? Betel did a just chatting stream. And he he was like, I didn't see the clip itself. But I remember who posted that on Twitter. I think it was, uh, I forgot, I forgot. One of Gerard's uh, aristocrats, ex-aristocrats. They posted on Twitter um, about what Betel said. It was like, what? Octavia played Fall Guys? And I didn't even get a single DM. And I was like, all right. Betel loves Fall Guys. <laughs> Does he actually love Fall Guys, like, ironically? So, my plan for next time is when he's fully, fully back. Because I th I don't think he's, like, fully back. Um, but hopefully when he's back and he's better and he's healthy, I can and we can invite Betel to Fall Guys. Yeah. And the... The greatest thing is, if he wins, that'll be hecking great. If he wins, then we can literally all call him Puppet of the Week. <laughs> then I'm gonna do a voice tweet congratulating him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, introducing the Puppet of the Week, Gavis Battle, yeah! <laughs> that'll be Puppet of the Week! That's a big, that's a big plan, okay? When we invite Battle. We need to make him win at least one. I mean, you guys are going to compete really hard, but... You guys say Betel is like cracked at Fall Guys, so... Definitely he'll win one of those games, right? So he will be Puppet of the Week! <laughs> That's so fun! So yeah, so the guys who won this were... Um... What were their names again? Chili Cheese! Chili cheese! Or is my list? Or is my list of puppet of the weeks? God damn, I don't even remember my puppets of the week. What a great reward. <laughs> Spicy cheese night! Silphy and Vili. Congratulations for winning puppets of the week. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to do more. I want to do more of these games where you guys can compete and play. You know, basically you're playing with me and against me and against each other. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? That's fun, right? So, then I rested from Wednesday to Thursday, which is great. Rest, really good. Not actually rest, because I still do a lot during rest days. But it was nice to get my mind off things. Did I stream during my rest day? Oh! Right, State of Play, which we're going to be talking about later. We're going to round up State of We're going to do a State of Play roundup later. I streamed at, what, 5? 5.30? 5.30 a.m.? Yeah? That was, that was so early. <laughs> I have to say, that was fun. Very, very early. But it was fun just because of what we, what we watched. And, all the, and I was surprised. The, the usual people, you know, who are even here now, they were there as well. 5.30 a.m. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Another state of play is going to happen soon. So, uh, the next state of play that's going to happen is final, of final is a state of play dedicated to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So, however, at least this time, the time is more manageable. They, I think, they really needed to do a time that is friendly to Japanese audiences, because five four a.m. for Japanese audiences that's 5 a.m. Damn. They can't. It's Final Fantasy VII. Of course, they need to make it friendly to Japanese audiences. 
Um, Fall Guys is so fun. Hope you get... Oh, Chocolate Milk Tea. Hope you get a crown next time. You have potential. Also, one month. Yippee. Chocolate Milk Tea. One of the, one of the greats in Fall Guys. So good. Yeah. So we're going to be watching that one soon. That's coming next week. Spoilies for next week's schedule. Then, the fun stream. The fun... The heckin' stream that broke Gerard's voice and made 2K23. Uh, have you guys... Uh, <laughs> I hope I hope you guys watch both NBA streams. I I'm proud to say that I rewatched the streams, like let, bits and pieces of it. You really don't need to know anything about basketball because <laughs> it, was, it was someone posted on Twitter as well. I forget who it was. God damn it! It was the um. <laughs> It was like dunking on Tempest with a little bit of basketball stream or something like that. <laughs> roasting roasting Tempest with a little bit of basketball stream. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically just a bunch of trash talk against Tempest with a little bit of basketball on the side. And I really want to make a Shinri compilation. I really want to get a Shinri compilation. Oh, was it Kang Kong that made that? <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Octosus. Check it. Hashtag Octosus. Um, damn, Shinri though. That was, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, Shinri even tweeted. I think Shinri tweeted this morning or yesterday. He was like, because he's, he's having his ISP problems, right? And he saw it. He saw the clips. He was like, okay, ISP problems. I can't stream. So please support the other boys. Then he was like, I I heard that Gerard and Octavio had a fun stream the other day. I've been seeing the clips. <laughs> and in my mind, I was like, no! Scatter! He found us! He found the clips! <laughs> he is aware of it. <laughs> I know! Scatter! No, that was so funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad Gerard was able to join me for that. Um, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. Basketball, of course, course. Um, I also did a little announcement there at the end that I am doing something more when it comes to this Armis Armis Tempest AU stuff that I've been doing, uh, which are more simulations rather than actual. Uh, us you know it's great because we we can eliminate the gaming skill from the equation <laughs> like for example dead by daylight we were just decimated by altair during dead by daylight so we can eliminate that from the equation from the variables that cause armis or tempest to win we just leave it all up to the cpu right so that's pretty cool. So I have something cooking with regards to that. It's not basketball. It's not basketball. Uh, it's something else. But I do eventually want to make uh, like this series, but different kinds of games. So maybe, I don't know, volleyball, tennis, wrestling. Yeah, fighting games. I don't know, swimming. Is there a game for swimming or stuff, stuff like that? Um, if there are games that allow us to do kind of like simulations like that, that'd be super freaking cool. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Chess. I feel like chess, we actually need to play chess. Maybe. I don't know. Horse racing? <laughs> Super Smash? We'd be smashing. Super Smash, I'm going to use Kingdom Hearts. I mean, I'm going to use Sora. That's it. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, that'll be so fun. But I have something cooking. I already, I already have two guests for this next one. It's going to happen in a few weeks. We'll see. We'll see. There's just so many things on the horizon right now. So, we'll see. So many things to do. So little time. Damn. All right. Then, Saturday, we played Monster Hunter World. It wasn't D&D. It wasn't D&D. I remember what happened was the day before our D&D collab, Ruse was like, oh, no, gamers. <laughs> the setup for this is... Very intense. We need to change. We 
uh, and we were like, no, we, we, it's fine, it's fine, we can do it. Those, we were like, no, no I, yeah, I'm doing this, but, you know, it's not going to live up to my standards. And I'm like, okay, sure, fine, 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 okay, you, you need to rest. It, we can't have a D&D game where um, the DM is sleepy because it didn't get sleep because of all the setup he did for the campaign. So we're like, oh yeah, let's let's change games. Let's do Monster Hunter World instead. And damn. Monster Hunter World is so fun. Like, Rise was already very fun. I lo I love Rise. It's a very it's a very easy to pick up and play. But Monster Hunter World is just so much more is so much more detailed and so much more involved. I feel like the fact that it doesn't have the wire bug just makes it I do love the wire bug. I do love the the movement and mobility you get from the wire bug, but it kind of kind of trivializes a bunch of, you know, the mechanics, I guess, because if you're knocked down, you can just easily just war bug out, right? But for Monster Hunter World, I I felt like I was thinking a bit more, maybe? Kind of thinking a bit more, but we were just screaming still all around. Just screaming our heads off. That was so funny. I, I love our Monster Hunter collabs. I wish we can... I want, I want us to play Monster Hunter World up to Iceborne, if we can. Yeah. I actually have a small announcement regarding Monster Hunter World soon for next week's schedule and going forward. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yee! Then for the Cursed Menchie stream, the Cursed Menchie stream actually wasn't, didn't pull through. Um, because my, it's same, same with Ruse, my concept of it, I didn't feel like it was good enough or I didn't have time to fully make it good. So instead, we did an art stream. Now, for what we drew, uh, for now, only members know. But it will all be revealed. I mean, I will be posting the art soon. All right. I'll be posting the art soon on Twitter. So look out for that. But for now, it's it's a Menshi exclusive thing. So if you guys are uh, members, sock puppets above, you can watch that too. That's pretty That's pretty nice. One of one of our more... One of my... My recent normal streams or so they say yeah a normal stream but do check that out it's pretty fun pretty chill you can put it on the side while you're working or eating or doing something right uh-huh fuyu says looks like looks like you have a complaint there for you <laughs> and today octox with octavio but more importantly today was also axel's 3d Axel's 3D! Oh my god! Oh my god! I was spazzing out. We were watching it in VC with some of the Manasans too. Um, and oh boy, oh boy, I'm so. Why is he so cool? Right? I mean, his design is cool. He looks cool. Just in general, right? But why does he also move cool? Why does he... Why is his body language... Cool too? His movement, yeah! How? Hips still be moving? His voice is cool. His movement is cool. His design is cool. Everything he did. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, uh, here's the thing. He also is a very... He was... He... The aura he gave during the whole thing is... Um, he was very comfortable. Right? He, he felt really comfortable. It felt like he was really comfortable moving around, singing, performing. Right? Like he was in his freaking element. <laughs> he was in his element there. Guy was made to perform. Guy was meant to perform. What the heck? Bro, don't compliment him too much. It damages our reputation. <laughs> nah. Nah. Don't you worry. 
Don't you worry. Now that Axel has a 3D, that just means, in fairness, right? In fairness and justice, that eventually, Armus will get 3D as well, right? Right? Right, Yago-sama? Right, please? And when we get our friggin' 3Ds, all, all bets are freaking off. All bets are off. Oh my god. The loudest 3D performances you've ever seen. Imagine an Armus 3D off collab. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's gonna be an off collab. Armus 3D collab. The loudest, craziest 3D stage you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be actual fighting. People are gonna literally gonna we're gonna literally try and kill each other. We're gonna kick each other in the balls. You know? Punch each other's faces. <laughs> 3D beating each other up, yes. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna get, we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna get the Manasans as like, you know, those gor gorillas, gorilla characters on the side. We're actually gonna beat them up. We're gonna destroy the studio. <laughs> we're gonna destroy the studio so no one else can 3D ever. The first and last 3D is gonna be of Armis. <laughs> You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna see us. We're gonna destroy the studio, right? Then we're gonna exit the studio and go straight to all the other offices and destroy these offices as well. Then go straight to Yago's office and be like, Yago, we challenge you to a, <laughs> to a fight. <laughs> then Yago is like super powerful and he just kills all of us. <laughs> this is, it. for legal reasons, this is a joke. This is a joke, okay? This is a joke! Disclaimer! I'm just joking. I will never do that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get obliterated. Obliterated at the final scene of our 3D. <laughs> Yago just ah, burns all. Ah! <laughs> ah. Okay. But yeah, that was a fun week. That was a fun week. So, yes! That was a great week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Also, we played... I played Silent Hill earlier, too. Uh, Mariak, thanks so much. He becoming a true criminal. Played Silent Hill. Silent Hill was really fun. Silent Hill, the short message was like... I like how... I did tell you guys before that I like more practical horror. Like actual... You know, actual monsters and stuff like that. Um, rather than... Purely, oh, nothing was real after all. And I think Silent Hill is a nice combination of that. Right? It's hybrid, hybrid psychological and hybrid actual horror. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I loved it. Uh, I love the graphics. I'm pretty sure the actual Silent Hill is going to be in third person, right? Probably. Maybe one of the three Silent Hills they announce is going to be first person. But I do think that the actual remake is going to be third person. Horror but not too scary? That's fine. That's fine. In horror, I... I... Well, I, I did get scared. I, get, I did get jump scared at least. What matters more to me in horror is aesthetic. And the feeling of... The feeling of uneasiness. And uncom like the feeling that I am uncomfortable. I like that more than any whatever ah! you can give me. Yeah, the vibes of horror, right? If the aesthetic is really nice, like nice in a scary way, in a scary, in a creepy, in a dark way, plus it just makes you feel uncomfortable in your seat, then yes. I don't care if I don't scream. I don't care if I don't. It's it always annoyed me so much. Like for many many years, like going through school and stuff, is a lot of people. A lot of people judge horror by the amount of times they they scream. 
or stuff like that. By the amount of times I'm like, ah, like, oh my god, ooh, the design is scary. And it's annoying because they literally go to like cinemas. They go to cinemas just to do that. To be like, ah, ooh. And then if they come out of a movie, like for example, let's see, let's just say something like Mid Midsummer, Midsummer, right? Or even The Witch. The Witch, my favorite, one of my favorites. Or Pan's Labyrinth, right? Pan's Labyrinth is a horror is kind of a horror movie, horror fantasy. You don't you don't you don't go ah! You don't become Mario in those movies. But you do feel a sense of dread like huh, Oh no, what's oh, oh ooh, you know? Stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I appreciate more in horror. You know, oh, oh! Hoo -hoo! <laughs> And for Silent Hill, I I mean, I was gagging <laughs> at one point. I didn't like how uncomfortable the <laughs> the eyes were everywhere. I didn't like all the school stuff going on. Um Oh, all that I mean, it was there was a lot of, lot of talk about suicide as well, you know, stuff like that. It's it's some dark themes in there. Um, but I did, I did feel uncomfortable. I did feel, ooh, ooh, right? And I did scream as well, which is great. Cause, cause the freaking flower girl kept jump scaring me. They're not even jump scares. They're more like, I just opened the door at the wrong time and it's there. And I'm like, ah, right. So yeah. And that was... Yeah, I even knew him that you, yeah, it was literally in front of me. Woo! Right? That was so fun. Ah, I want to play. I want to play the actual Silent Hill. I want to see. I also want to start going through the Resident Evils, the new ones, the new remakes, the Resident Evil Village. I just recently finished, so I can't, I can't really play it uh, immediately. I could, if I could get PlayStation, PlayStation VR 2 soon. I could replay Resident Evil Village um, and Resident Evil 4 Remake in VR, but that's not going to happen soon. We'll see. I have, I'm prioritizing more other things, more other upgrades for my setup because my GPU is from 2016. I just found out my, GT, my GTX 1080 is a 2016 release. It's already 2024. So if ever someone tells you to upgrade your GPU in three years, in four years, because they're like, nah, you can't stream with that GPU anymore. It's four years old. Don't believe him. <laughs> My GPU is eight years old. <laughs> I bought it used as well. It was a mining card. I saved it from its mining overlords for it to start playing games instead. That's why. In the past two weeks, I've got three blue screens of death. <laughs> yeah, I saved it from the mines. Just to... <laughs> I saved it from the mines just to really work it many years later in Holostars. <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah, stop your crypto mining. Instead, play six hours a day. Streaming and playing games at the same time, you know, do your work, and it's already really old. It's literally almost on its deathbed, and this is the time I start overworking it. So, I've been getting some BS BSODs. I need to, I need to upgrade soon. But let's move on to the member submitted questions. All right, let's go. Member submitted questions. First off, we get an update. Now, remember uh, last Oct Talks with Octavio. If you don't, there was a story. Not really a story, I guess. But um, one, of, one of our puppets here, which is uh, Kong Kong, had a dilemma. And that is with regards to the Taylor Swift ticket. So they had a Taylor... They had an ex that they bought a Taylor Swift ticket with. 
but since they're an ex now, they don't want to spend the the t- the Taylor Swift concert with their ex anymore. So what what should be done? Does the ex have a right to that ticket, or should Kang Kong contact their ex to give the ticket back? What's going on here? What's the solution? So this is the update. It's less a question and more an update. Guess what? The day after Octox episode 4, my ex messaged me. And guess what they said, Octoposse? Guess with me. Word for word. Now I'm just going to translate this, okay? Hi. Can you send the PDF of the ticket for Taylor Swift? Thank you. And this is the situation that I hoped wouldn't happen. I told, I told last week that I hope they don't ask for the ticket. If they don't ask for the ticket, you have to do nothing. That ticket is yours. But they literally straight up asked for the ticket. So, <clears throat> obviously I was appalled. I didn't expect such a demanding message. If you were me, concerning what we've discussed in previous Octox episodes, what would you have taught? What you have thought and or done? So, then Kong Kong turned to the Octoposse. The Octoposse too were appalled and had opinions and mixed suggestions. Right? Personally, I couldn't let this sit and marinate because it'll be like torture for me. So I embodied your grab destiny by the balls energy and replied back. Yes! See? That's what you guys should be doing. You need to grab destiny by the balls and never let go. I told my ex that I couldn't send them the tickets because technically the official tickets will only be out two weeks before the concert. But I also asked if we could talk for a second regarding the concert. Only took an hour for them to get back while well, the puppets and I were sat at the edge of our seats. But anyway, I finally said I wasn't comfortable going to the concert with them. And if I could offer to buy their ticket and or if they could switch seats with someone else, with someone else, right? So what Kong Kong wanted to do was maybe just buy the ticket from the ex or have him switch seats with someone else. So they won't be in the same concert at the same time next to each other too. Guess what they replied back? Again, word for word. It's fine. I sold my ticket already. So! They already already sold the ticket. Wait, how did they sell the ticket? How do they sell the ticket if they don't have the ticket yet? What? (laughs) <laughs> Did they just accept payment from somebody with a promise of them? I guess they, I guess someone paid them and he's just going to give them the tickets once they're out. Maybe. Weird. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. But I guess that basically means that he's not going to be in the concert. He's not going to be next to you. And that's uh, what's important. We don't really need to know the details of what he arranged with his friend, I guess. But does that mean you're going to be next to his friend? During that concert? Would that be okay with you? (laughs) There we go, Octopus. It feels like I took a uh, a fish bone off my throat. But still pissed I got unnecessary anxiety and psych damage because of the initial message. Why just why? After that, the ex has been reaching out again, asking about the seat plan. But I've left them on red for now because I'm still pissed. (laughs) That's a problem for future Kong Kong. But thank you, Tavion Octopossi, and especially the puppets who were with me during the time. I will will never hear back from me regarding this ex ever again. See? See, the solution always seems to be just to assert yourself. You know? Just say say what you want to say. Same goes for, uh, was it Nintendo? It was Nintendo the other day with their roomie that kept the windows open and was chilling, their, really, really freezing their butt. The toilet was really freezing their butt because of that. They talked to them and they reached kind of a compromise, which is great. But yeah, see? Just say it out, ra- just say it out loud. I don't really want to be with you in this concert. You need to... I'm going to pay for a ticket or you're going to sell it or you're going to switch seats. So, there we go. 
Thank you for the update. Hopefully, we don't get any more updates about the X. Maybe he's got, is he gonna send you another gift again? Another game? Is he gonna send you Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? And it's like, hi. Are you having a good day? <laughs> to bait you into talking with him again? Who knows? We'll see. Life is long. Anything can happen. <laughs> okay, next question. Next question is... Uh, Hey, Nemusagi, chippy chapa chippy, chippy chapa chapa dooby dooby daba daba magical me dooby dooby bum 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 bum. Thank you for the super! Nemu! Nemusagi, thank you so much. <laughs> ah, that is our favorite song these days. Chippy chapa dooby doo, chippy chippy chapa chapa dooby dooby daba daba man. Oh, oh! I hope I don't get DMCA'd for that. I don't think I'm even seeing it properly, so maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, why would he need any more details about the seat? I'm guessing. Here's here's what I hope isn't the case. I hope that friend who he is selling the tickets to, I hope that they've already decided to buy it. Like, they have like a contract or an agreement that they'll buy it. And not like, a few weeks before, they're like, nah, they're not going to buy it anymore. So I guess the ticket's mine. So. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Ha! Huh? Next question is submitted by Typhus, Typhus the Hungry. And hey, Tavi. Just wondering if you had any favorite Pokemon. Knowing people's favorite Mon has always felt weirdly insightful to me. Now this, what are you guys' favorite Pokemon? I definitely do have a favorite Pokemon. Um, I wonder if you can guess my favorite Pokemon. All right? I wonder if you can guess. Talonflame, Flygon, Vapor. I know Vaporeon. Gardevoir? I do know Gardevoir. Gardevoir is the pretty green one, right? Jiggly, Jigglypuff! Eevee, Volcarona. Damn, I don't even know these. Mini Q? Squirtle, Dratini. Dratini is great. I love Dratini. Blastoise kept roasting Pokemon. I didn't. Ro I didn't. I wasn't roasting Pokemon. I'm just saying I haven't played Pokemon past Gen. I guess not Gen two because my favorite Pokemon is from another Gen. Gen three. I don't know. <clears throat> Magikarp, Dratini, Mr. Mime. Oh, Snivy, Snivy, Jinx. I do. I do know Jinx. Charizard. I knew Charizard. Trico. Mudkip, Gengar, Sceptile. Okay. Hmm. Gengar is pretty cool. Yeah. My favorite Pokemon is actually uh, Suicune. Right? Let me check. Suicune, where are you? Suicune. Suicune? Suicune. 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 Yeah, Suicune. I freaking love Suicune. Speaking of Gen 2, oh, there we go. I really have only played until Gen 2. <laughs> uh, in terms of male, human, female, Pokemon breeding, Vaporeon is the most comp- Oh, no. I know that. I know that copypasta. I know that. But thank you so much for the Supa. Yeah, Suicune. Suicune is so... Is so majestic. I love Suicune so much. Right? Does it look like me? Damn. There was, there really was a time where I, where I was obsessed with Pokemon. I would make like monster designs. I draw monster designs on my notebook and stuff like that. And um, I just really love those three legendary, are they legendary? Like dogs or something like that? Those three dogs, right? Hey, Eevee was summoned by Pokemon Talk, base, base favorite Pokemon. Thank you, see? See? Who are those three dogs again? Suicune dogs. Where are the names? Where are the names? Three legendary dogs are a lie. What? Raiko and Entei. Yeah, those three. Those three. I was really obsessed with those three. And when I made designs, they were always they would always look like those three. But what was funny is that at one point I literally 
I remember I was a kid. I was a I was a kid, 23 years old kid. Then I thought I was buying a new Pokemon game. I bought a new Pokemon game for my Game Boy. But then for some reason, I bought it. But apparently it was a fake Pokemon game? I played so many hours of it just for it to be weird at some point. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I thought it was a real Pokemon game, but I actually w bought... I bought it! You are living in a creepypasta? <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess it's a Pokemon Jade. Let me check. Let me check. That's I actually wanted to find out what one that was. Pokemon Jade. It is! It is! I remember this deer whatever looking thing in the cover. Pokemon Jade. I played this so much. Have people been debated by this too? Yeah, they were selling that in Toy. They were selling that. It looked real. Cuz cuz back then I didn't really have any other place to buy except for like, you know, the legit places. Oh man. It was with the official games. Ha. Huh. It didn't hit me immediately that it was weird. But after a while, I was like, what? Even the, I don't remember much of it, but I remember it was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what happened there. I wonder, I wonder why that happened. So, yeah. And I was, I think I was looking for, you know, my boys, my Suicune, the Raikos and Entes, and they weren't anywhere to be seen Um, on that game. And then I was like, even the usual Pokemon weren't in that game as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's one of my memories of Pokemon. Aside from that, uh I got I played red, blue, gold, silver, and yellow actually. I did play yellow as well because I was really on the Pokemon anime hype train very much. Very, very much. What is going on? Alright. <clears throat> so thank you for the question, Typhus Hung Hungry. What does Suikun say about me? I wonder if you're if you're watching this, Typhoeus, you need to comment on this VOD and say what me liking Suicune does say about me. Because he did say knowing people's favorite mon has always felt weirdly insightful to me. So there. Would you play new Pokemon if one came out, or is it not for you anymore? I actually wanted to play Arceus. Arceus. One thing I'm pretty sure about is that I have no interest in you know the usual formula of Pokemon game? Um Which is why I'm really interested in Arceus Arceus? That one? Because it's it's different, right? Um The 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 traditional Pokemon format I've come to accept is I'm not I'm not their target demographic anymore. I'm looking for something else. Yeah. Black and white remake just teased. Mm. Arceus is better than Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet, I'm gonna guess it's more like the traditional one, right? Or maybe. What was Scarlet and Violet in the vein of Arceus? Has there any been other Pokemon in the vein of Arceus as well? Since Arceus released? You know, like kind of like an open world and stuff like that. You know what I really liked playing long ago? Oh, it's similar to Arceus, I see. The Pokemon I really loved playing long ago, Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Coliseum. Was it Pokemon Coliseum? Something like that. Would you consider playing a side game, Pokemon Ranger? I've never heard of Pokemon Ranger. So Pokemon Snap, not the Switch one. I, I, I haven't played the Switch one. But I did play, was it the N64 one? Because I remember my uncle had an N64, and that's the only time I was able to play N64 games. Uh, I played Mario 64, then they had like Pokemon Snap, and they also had the Pokemon Coliseum. 
Yeah! Those are pretty cool. Hey you, Pikachu. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Pokemon Stadium! Pokemon Stadium. Yes, Stadium. Not Snap. Stadium. Oh, I love that so much. Uh, when it comes to the Pokemon games, not really Pokemon, but I really love the Digimon games. The Digimon games where... Remember that Digimon game where you where you in where you put a CD inside your PlayStation One, and it it would freaking generate a unique Digimon based on the CD that you put. Oh, oh, oh! Monster Rancher. There wasn't Digimon. There was also another Digimon game, Digimon World. Digimon World was also cool, but Monster Rancher was is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, Monster Rancher. That's so good too. But there was also another Digimon game that was like an adventure. It was a cool adventure. It was so good as well. But the Monster Rancher one was... Whew, I spent so many hours playing Monster Rancher. Oh my god. Ah! So cool! <sighs> See? The, yeah, this is why I, I was never a Nintendo kid. It's because of my PlayStation. <laughs> Really, that's why that's why I've I'm trying to position myself. You know, I'm trying to get PlayStation to notice me. Because I'm like, PlayStation, your strongest warrior is finally in Hall of Stars. Please let me play your games. <laughs> Legend of Mana? Of course, Suikoden, of course! Legend of Legaia. Those freaking games as well. Woo! I love it. Ah. Honestly, I really just play on PC out of convenience. Uh, and also because a lot of people play collab games on PC. But if I could just play everything on my PlayStation 5 right now, I would. I'd give up my PC in a heartbeat. If I could stream on my PlayStation 5 and do everything and play games on it and do all, play all the games on it and play with everyone else, I'd give up my PC in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, Artanelico, yes, please, Artanelico. Yes. <sighs> so good. Like, for example, I've been having a hard time trying to buy... Not really trying to buy it, but having a hard time just pulling the pulling the trigger on Grand Blue Fantasy Relink because I really want to get it on PlayStation so I can get the trophies and stuff. But I know that Gibby, Flayon, Axel, and everybody are playing on PC, so I'm like, Argh! if I get it on PlayStation, I'll be like, I can't play with them. But if I get it on PC, I'm like, ah, I really want to play this on my PlayStation and get trophies. Yeah, it isn't cross-platform. That's annoying, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I played the Rayman games. Wait, I played the PlayStation 1 Rayman games. Axel, oh, <laughs> of course, that's his like favorite game. I understand that. I understand that. It's like me with Kingdom Hearts. I bought Kingdom Hearts on PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, I buy Kingdom Hearts on everything. Unfortunately, even even if it's all just the same game, as long as they have a an official release somewhere, I'm buying that. Xenogears, of course! Xenogears. Actually, now that we're talking about this, we can move on to the next question, which is we're already talking about it, but the next question is... um. Submitted by Dario Kantu. Also, thank you so much, um, Typhoos the Hungry, for the Pokemon question. But going to the next question, we got from Dario Kantu 7014. Hello, Octavio. I think by now we all know we love Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy. And I remember that you mentioned Xenoblade to Haka. That got me curious. What's your favorite RPG that is not made by Square Enix? And do you plan to stream other RPGs once you finish FF16? Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! We're already talking about them. But I guess my favorite games, favorite RPGs, uh, are definitely, you know, the Persona, Persona games. Artanelico, uh, Xenoblade, Xenogears, Dot Hack GU. 
Do you guys know that? Don hack GU. Why not do like him? Personal save in PS5 and work in group. <laughs> that requires me to buy a game the Grand Blue Fantasy really twice though. Uh, but bruh. <laughs> Uh, buy twice full price. I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, dot hack Jihu. Yes, dot hack. I haven't played the dot hack sign game, but I did play Jihu. Dot hack Jihu, and it's two sequels. So good. I want to one day play it again. Did you watch the dot hack anime? Yes, I did watch the dot hack anime. Welcome. To the world. At least a GU anime. I haven't really been exposed to the sign. You know, that hack sign and stuff like that. Right? You buy Kingdom Hearts on all platforms though. Yeah, because friggin' Grand Blue Fantasy re Grand Blue Fantasy is Axel's Kingdom Hearts. That's how it goes. <laughs> I will only ever do that for Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, my beloved. That hack sign greater than SAO. True, true. Any experience with Tales games? Yes! I really love the Tales games. I played Tales of Destiny, Tales of Abyss, Tales of Symphonia, Tales of... Recently, I played Tales of Arise. Um, Tales of Zillia. Tales of Zestiria. What's your favorite Tales? Honestly, my, fav ta my favorite Tales might just be Tales of... Uh, it's either Tales of Zillia or Tales of Arise, actually. The one I the one I really like about Arise is just the gameplay. It's so good. <clears throat> so good. I would have said Abyss. Before Abyss was my favorite. Then I really got into Zillia. And I had so much fun. The thing I love about Zillia is the main character is a brawler. That's why I was super happy playing that. Then Arise. Arise! I, I just love Arise. I just love how it looks so much. And the gameplay in Arise is so great. Do you play Zillia 2? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play Zillia 2. Unforch. Vesperia. I tried getting into Vesperia, actually. But I think, I think I got into Vesperia a little bit too late. A little bit too late where it feels very... <laughs> I guess... Uh, like, I feel like it's... I got into it when I... Now that I feel like it's kind of outdated. <laughs> I should have gotten into it when it first released. But remember, when it was first released, it was just on the Xbox 360. And I didn't have an Xbox. <laughs> but Chloe Senzai, thanks so much for the membership. Yes, Tales of... Yes! We love Tales. I love Tales so much. Um... What else is here? What else are we going to talk about? What other RPGs? The RPG I really want to play is The Lost Odyssey because it was only on Xbox. God damn it. The Lost Odyssey. I also want to play The Last Story that was on Wii. Then I also want to play The Last Remnant. Valkyrie Profile, yes! Nibelung Valesti! Nibelung Valesti! Wild Arms, yes, please! So good! Star Ocean, heck yeah! Heck yeah! All of that! All of that! I haven't played this one though. The... The... Faithlessness... Loneliness... Whatever. <laughs> I haven't played that one. But I do want to play the newest one that came out. I was just, I was just in the womb for Hollow Stars when that game came out. I was like, no, I can't play this now. I, I need to save some games for when I debut. And now we're here and I'm having a hard time finding time to play all of these games at all. Octopath Traveler, that is definitely coming soon. For sure, I do want to play that just because, you know, it's a perfect game for me. Octavio, Octopath Traveler. Yeah, Auden Chronicles, the spiritual successor to Suikoden. Yes, please. Yes, please. I I will consider playing the new Star Ocean on stream for sure. 
Uh, if they're... But I'm definitely gonna prioritize some other games first. I do want to get to Lies of P stuff, right? Uh, what about Trails? Of, yeah, I played Trails of... Uh, Trails of... The first one? The first one in the new... The new... The first... Trails in the Sky? Trails in the Sky... I also played Trails of Cold Steel. Um, damn. So many games that I played. What the heck? Legend of Gru Dragoon, yes. Yes, of course. Bravely Default? Nah. I do want to get it to Bravely Default. For sure. But that's like... that's The problem with that is those are the Nintendo side games. The Nintendo side of RPGs. And I don't play a lot of Nintendo stuff. <laughs> That's why those games I haven't really dabbled into, you know, Brave, uh, D Bravely Default, stuff like that. Cool. Ah. Chrono Trigger! I do want to play Chrono Trigger on stream. I haven't played that. I've only got up to the festival, which is the very beginning of the game. I think I need to play it. My JRPG-loving ass is a shame that I, that I haven't even finished Chrono Trigger. Ha! Dragon Quest X? 11, I mean Dragon Quest 11, I played Dragon Quest 8. Love 8. Love Dragon Quest 11 on the Switch. So good. Uh, I played Cold Steel on the PS Vita. <laughs> Chrono Cross as well. My, I have a funny, 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 funny story with Chrono Cross. I remember, uh, cause here, I guess I've never told this before, but for I didn't grow up in South Elysium. I grew up in North Elysium. That's a thing. Um, so I remember when I was there, my uncle uh, had the PlayStation One, and <clears throat> the time where I needed to go back to South Elysium, I was like, "Uncle, can you please buy this game for me? It's Chrono Cross." Then it was like, okay. Then he bought the game. Then he bought the game. Then I played it in South Elysium and it was region locked. There's a region lock going on. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was a region lock. My PlayStation 1 couldn't play it. So I had to buy. I still had to buy Chrono Cross on my own. Uh. But love Chrono Cross. I want to play the remaster. I want to play the remaster so bad. Yeah, not the region luck. <laughs> ah. Ah! I love RPGs so much. I love RPGs. <sighs> and this is why, guys. This is why I have managed to avoid all these popular PC games, you know, the Apex Legends, I don't know, the Valorants, or I don't know, <laughs> the Dead by Daylights and all of that stuff, because while everyone was having fun collabing and playing all these games on PC, I was, <laughs> I was on my PlayStation. <laughs> I was just on my PlayStation, you know? You know, even stuff like White Knight Chronicles. I was so into that stuff. White Knight Chronicles, Dark Cloud. Bro, these games are so good. Rogue Legacy? Rogue, Gal Rogue Galaxy? Ah. Even at Mega Man. There was a Mega Man RPG too. There was a Me Mega Man Legends, right? Shadow Hearts? Bro! Rogue Galaxy, yeah! From level 5? Woo! Tactics! White Knight Chronicles. I was such a big White Knight Chronicles defender. I wanted... I wanted White Knight Chronicles. Because I think White Knight Chronicles was initially supposed to be like a trilogy. Or something like that. I was like, bro, all of you need to play White Knight Chronicles. They're made by level 5. Level 5 is the best RPG developer right now. <laughs> now that level 5 is mentioned I actually want to try Yokai Watch now you know since uh, as an extension of our Pokemon Pokemon talk Yokai Watch should be cool though I don't but I think 
what the other one Inazuma 11 what was that Inazuma 11 but that's in Japanese only I think damn it but yeah these games uh these games are so good this game of course of course Professor Layton I do love Professor Layton as well You just play a sidekick, not the hero. I spent so much time in multiplayer in White Knight Chronicles of all things. I was going ham on White Knight Chronicles in multiplayer. And no one even knows. No one even knows these days that that existed. <laughs> uh, Nino Kuni, of course. I actually have the Nino Kuni Collector's Edition for uh, because it has a nice plushie. Is a nice little plushie of the guy, of the yellow guy. Valkyria Chronicles, of course! Of course! I do want to play Valkyria Chronicles on stream. I think I'll do that soon. I just need the perms for it. But Sega is great. I'm sure I, I'm sure Sega will definitely give me, maybe, please, Valkyria Chronicles. I want to revisit that. It's been so long. Uh, one of my, my, my two first games for PlayStation 3 was Valkyria Chronicles and uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. Guns of the Patriots. Oh, I want to do a Metal Gear Solid. Ah! Ah! So many games. So many games. But thank you. We're going to be talking way too long about games if I don't stop this. So uh, thank you, Dario Kantu, for the question uh, of, about the RPGs. Bro, three houses. Don't, don't tease me with a good time. Fire Emblem. <laughs> Please. Ah, oh. next. Oh, actually, since we're talking about games, I actually wanted wanted to know you guys' opinion on it. Opinion on this, but please don't get too too heated on the discussion for this. Okay. Gre this was submitted by Jack six nine four three. Right. Uh, greetings, Octavio. This is my first submission. Sending you a topic for Octox. With that, here is my topic: Easy mode in gaming. Is it good or bad? Right? Easy mode. What do you guys think about easy mode? Recently, there have been a lot of easy modes, story modes, I think they call it, story mode in a lot of games. Now, where they're basically, um, they make fights really easy. They give you even accessories or something like that. Uh, maybe God mode or whatever. Or auto, auto dodge. You know, buffs like that. Doesn't concern me. I don't use them. Good for story-driven games. Is good games are meant to be enjoyed. Yes, 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 yes. Wants to know the lore and more lore only. True. Not everyone has a game same gaming sense. Yes. Want to enjoy the story, so why not? True, true, true. Actually, agree. Actually, agree with all of that. Um, I think for games, definitely not everyone can be you know a sweaty gamer. Sometimes they're just a game that you like the look of, that you like the characters or stuff like that. And then you play it and you, you don't really care about mastering it or whatever. And story mode and easy mode definitely there for them, for sure. Um, Yeah, RE4 Infinite Rocket Launcher. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, There is, however... One thing, and this leads also into the next question. This is a two. Uh, this is a two-part question submitted by uh, Jax. Oh wait, the first one is Broken Zero Twenty Five. Uh, submitted by Broken Zero Twenty Five, but this is related to Jax Six Nine Four Three's question. Is Yo Tavi? So what's one thing, be it a trope or a mechanic of some kind, that we would like to see more in modern games nowadays? Adaptive music, where the music transitions with the gameplay, is a huge one for me. Now here is where I feel like is not said too much. I'm when it comes to easy mode in games, yes, please, right? Include that. For a lot of games. There are some games where you could argue that maybe, you know, there's some games, some developers where they just don't their vision of the game does not allow for an easy mode. And you know what? There's also something to be said about that for them. I mean, it's their creative vision, they can do whatever they want, but if they definitely include easy mode, it's that's only a plus in my opinion. However, 
What I think games need to do better is having a hard mode available at the very start. <laughs> That's what I want for me. Now here here are the things. Here 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 is the two games that I really freaking love. Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Final Fantasy 16. They don't have hard mode unlocked at the very beginning. <laughs> why, why don't you give me the choice? Why don't you give me the choice to be able to play hard mode in the beginning as well? You got story mode, but also give me the hard mode. <laughs> yeah, they lock it behind a new game plus. Which is okay, I guess, but that's that's where it kind of conflicts with me. Because once I play a game once, I'm usually like, eh. Uh, the second playthrough isn't the same anymore. It's not going to be the same. Now, if, we, if I could have done Final Fantasy mode, which is a hard mode FF16 for the first run, that'll be so cool! Or a hard mode for FF7 Remake for the first run. That'd be so cool! Um, replay. I guess, yeah, it's the replay value. Because, you know, you need some incentive to do a new game plus. So people keep playing it. Like, after release. But damn. Damn. Here is one thing, at least in RPGs, that I really appreciated with Xenoblade Chronicles... Remaster. Remake? Remaster. Yeah. The first Xenoblade Chronicles. Is they gave you the option to level up when you wanted to. Or level down. They they had a way for you to either level up only when you wanted to or level down if you wanted to as well. Or something like that. Um, because my problem is I like to do everything in an RPG all the side quests and even when it comes to just the battles i like to like defeat mobs here and there everywhere right <laughs> just keep keep defeating mobs keep practicing my combos and stuff like that what eventually happens is when i get to the end boss i'm like super overpowered and while some people do love that some people do love that feeling where they just hit you know the god of the universe that they've been working towards the whole hundred hours one shot and it's dead some people love that but I definitely do not. <laughs> I'm definitely not of that mind. I want... When I get to a final boss, I would like it... I would like to lose multiple times until I eventually win. So, that's... I guess that's one, one mechanic I really want for RPGs. If they can't balance like their side quests, is just give me the option to level up when I want to or level down when I want to. For the first playthrough. A uh, Twewi? Oh yeah, Twewi also had that, yeah. Yeah, one hit KO, yeah, exactly. And it's basically induced hard mode in new game or kickstart new game plus for some eras. Yeah, if was, I really don't want to go back to new game plus, because I've already experienced it. Um Though in 16 it's interesting because at least in 16 they re literally re replace the mobs. With new mobs. So it could still be cool. You can stack. Yeah, you can stack XP in FF15. Yeah, exactly. There is an option for you to not level up in 15, which is great. Um. <clears throat> Wait, in FF15, don't you level up only if you go to, like, your trailer? Or something like that? I think scaling enemies based on levels will be a good solution. Yeah, true, true. A lot of people didn't like that about Final Fantasy VIII. But I really like just going to a new area and the enemies being my level. However, what happens is that <laughs> if you go back to the very first area, you know, with slimes or something like that, you'll be fighting <laughs> your level 90 and you'll be fighting level 90 slimes. <laughs> so that's kind of weird, I guess. Yeah, the inn has the XP multiplier. Yeah, that's, that's a problem, I guess, with level scaling. <laughs> because even the weak enemies scale up when you pass them. When you're done with them. So, 
That's a thing as well. So yeah, definitely. I'm glad there are some people here. I'm not an M. <laughs> what the heck? I'm so, I'm glad that you know some people share that sentiment with me, including a hard mode from the very start. Games were like that before, but for some reason, not anymore. Not all of them, at least. Not most of them. I mean, not many of them. At least those that that I played. They're always locked behind a new game plus. I'd, you know, if a game, if Final Fantasy 16 was like, if you want to unlock hard mode at the very start, then you pay $15 for it. I'll be sure. Do it. Do it. I'll pay for it. <laughs> I'll pay for it. Whatever. <laughs> Just give me that experience. Right? So, stuff like that. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> don't give them ideas now. Where <laughs> not. Not. Don't. Don't listen to me. But yeah, I definitely do want, you know. Uh, story mode for games. Yes. Hard games from the start. Also, yes. I think they can only just help. You know. Help. Gamers, you know, get the experience they want out of games. Okay, those are, those are a few questions. What else is here? What other question is here? Oh, this next question, my Sammers. Right, guys, Valentine's is around the corner and Sammers has a question. It's time for Valentine's Day. So, for shits and giggles, I'd like to ask Tavi and the Octoposse, what's a good thing to do to celebrate Valentine's? I want to do something different this year since I've been single all 23 plus years of my life. There were also times when me and my friends celebrated together singles day to treat ourselves. Lamau, but now I don't really have anyone besides family. All kinds of dares and suggestions are open as long as not go me going to night bars since I don't really drink and not into the party party vibe. Okay, this was submitted by Samers Twiorshish, right? What is something... That you can do when you're, uh, yeah, Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> what is something that you would do? What is something that we should do on Valentine's? Actually, I have I have a great suggestion to that. Watch my Valentine stream. That is why that is why I picked this question. <laughs> Watch my Valentine stream, right? Watch that. That's that's the best way for you to spend your Valentine's. Now, now here's the thing. There's a lot of there's going to be a lot of Valentine streams. But since you're here on Octox with Octavio, <laughs> watch my Valentine stream as well. Try asking someone out and attempt to riz and see what happens. Ooh, you can. You can be you can be extra confident that day. You can you know, I have nothing to lose. You can do that as well. Um Eat chocolates, play games, read Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint as I cry. What? What is Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint? Play Otome games? Not <laughs> true. Play Love in Deep Space. Play Love in Deep Space. What else? What else? What are the other suggestions here? Are they as good as my suggestion? League of Legends? No! I guess, yeah? <laughs> Rom-com movie marathon? Ooh? Make chocolate for family and friends and give them to them. That's actually pretty cool, right? Make chocolate. Make and design chocolate. However, do you like your family and friends? Do you even like them? Because you're going to be spending a lot of time making that chocolate. <laughs> and you better, better make sure that you do like your family and friends. <laughs> Uh, it's a webtoon. I see Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. Eat brownies. Play MOBA with me. <laughs> uh, be single in traffic. Yeah, that's 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 a thing about holidays in general. Traffic. You know, these big days, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. Traffic. You'd think it's the best day to go out. Not uh 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 traffic. Damn. Laser tag and destroy little kids' hopes and dreams. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Though, honestly, if I go to laser tag, I'd still lose. 
I still freaking lose to these kids that are cracked at laser tag. Maybe I'll kick them down. Maybe I can do that. I'll kick them in the chest. <laughs> hey, te uh, Debussy Tellers. Damn, you know you really need to get out of what when you spend Valentine's with Octavio. <laughs> I swear. My Valentine stream is gonna be one for the books. One for the books. Though, also, my Valentine stream can only be experienced on that day. Unfortunately. Um. Unforch. Uh, learn what local places are doing Valentine stuff, then go next for discounted prices. You're right. Actually, that's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. Buy Christmas stuff after Christmas. Good. Good. It's gonna be, wait for it, legendary! Unarchive karaoke? Okay? Huh. <laughs> 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 hmm. Are you gonna do something cringe? <laughs> NPC stream? <laughs> Go out as a third wheel on your friend's date? <laughs> no! I guess. Kinda. Uh, give roses to other couples and say... <laughs> no! Don't do that! Uh, for those who don't un uh, don't know that... <laughs> Paten said... Give roses to other couples and say... I thought it was just me. I thought I was the only one that you loved. NPC boyfriend stream? <laughs> hey, how was your day? Hey, how was your day? Oh, I love it when you smile. Oh, I love it when you smile. Hey, how was your day? <laughs> that would be uh, hello baby girl you smell like shit hello baby girl you smell like shit <laughs> what else uh, BGC Konyo hey Santai Pare wait the Santai Pare Santai Pare Santai Pare Santai Pare PGC Bro Pala Indi Pare Bro Pala Santai Bro Santai Bro Tol Pare Chong Tol Pare Chong Bro Bro Tol Pare Chong What's up? Sentai bro tall para chong. <laughs> Where are we going, bro? <laughs> bro, dude, dude, tall para chong. It was so funny. It was so funny how people thought it was authentic. It was definitely not authentic. I could never do that unironically. What was it? The... You know what? You know what? You know, <laughs> where was the copy pasta site that I found the other day? <laughs> it's about time we busted that copy pasta uh, copy pasta site out. Let's see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the heck is this? Uh. <clears throat> B, B, ano yung nalalaman kung tinatarayan mo kami, B? Famous ka? Tapang ka? Kakasa ka ba? Ano, B? Palag square? Bati lang? Ano ba? B? B? Uy, bakit natatakot eh? Ikaw na-una. Pumalag ka, kingin mo, ouch, aray, ha? <laughs> what? Mari, when you posted that BGC copy pass, I was out studying and it dealt me so much psychic damage that the staff had to ask if I was okay <laughs> because I was frozen in place and staring at my phone for a good five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? 
You know, it's so weird. It's so weird. I have to say, shifting from English to this language is messing me up. Um, like, I don't know what's going on. I can speak it normally, but if I if I just do English, like for these past two hours I've been speaking English, then I suddenly switch. It's impossible. I I sound like a I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird accent. I need you to put down the schedule so I can clip your crimes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, oh, this is for Valentine's. This is for Valentine's. Hui. Oh, oh, ikaw. I miss you. Odimo ko miss. Gara mo naman. Kumusta ka na? Ba't nakasimawat ka? Hindi bagay sa'yo. Umiti ka nga. Tumingin ka sa'kin. Tumingin ka. Titigan mo ko. Titigan mo ko. Why is it so weird? Why is my freaking accent weird? <laughs> oh my god, these these coffee pastas! Man. Look, look, look at this! Look at these coffee pastas! They're so funny! I'm gonna link it in chat. <laughs> uh, Emil, thanks for the super. I love all the layers of your personality, Greenwich. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is Alan Calbo? Ouch, pain, hurt, disease, illness, sickness, disorder, stitch, ache, sting, wrench, sorrow, grief, sadness, loneliness, unhappiness, dissatisfaction, resentment, grudge, peak, displeasure, out, pain, pighati, lumbay, hinagpis, kilot, sakit, pagtangis, iyak, lungkot, sipayo, dalamhati, sama ng loob, bigat sa damdamin. Ha <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, let's stop. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to the. <laughs> let's move on to the news, shall we? It's time to move on. Let's go to the news. Okay, just just a few articles here. We're not gonna spend too much time with the news today. Um, just some interesting things. First off, we got a report from GamesIndustry.biz that this is pretty interesting actually. Ninety five percent of studios are working on or aim to release a live service game. In a survey of five hundred thirty seven game studios, live ops development teams want faster content releases. Releases. Um. 66% agree that live services are necessary for long-term title success. Um, the survey defines live services as any regular update cadence planned for a game. Um, <clears throat> the report notes that traditional game development is two, three years long, while live production is more than five years. That's, that's insane. Multi-year game development forms production processes and pipelines that are intended to deliver a few key milestones in what is essentially... What, what are these terms? These terms are weird. Production and live services, however, is a constant state of planning and adjusting game parameters to enhance player experience while designing and deploying new features to add new player value. Uh, so, here, the survey is 95% of game developers are making live service games. <laughs> That's insane to me. Are we at that point now? Where every game wants to be a free live service game? Holy crap. I mean, every developer is going to make a What does that mean? Think of Fortnite. Think of Fortnite where it's just uh I I th I like to think of live service games as lifestyle games. The games that you just go back to and spend money forever and ever. You know? Um, right, like Fortnite. And, you know, the, the gacha games. Like the gacha games. I guess gacha games are technically live service, right? Um, MMOs, maybe? And I'm okay with MMOs and stuff like that. But it's when... It's when they make something 
you know how they battle passes. There we go. Battle passes. Um, they got battle passes. They got seasons. Yeah, even Fall Guys. And it's crazy. Look at this. They said here that a traditional game takes two to three years long, while a live service game takes five years to make. So they're going to spend five years on a live service game, hoping they can make it as big as like Fortnite. And that's that's crazy, actually, because <laughs> I feel like there isn't enough room for live service games to be as big as like Fortnite or like the gotcha games or stuff like that, right? I feel like it's so hard. I feel like it's really hard to get big in that area. You need to really be lucky. You need to really be lucky <laughs> and have a really good game. Um, uh, also mean developer studio have jobs as long as they stay up. So yes. And that's that's like a big risk, right? If you think about it, um, it, they do start as free to play. I guess they're mostly always free to play. And you're hoping that for a long time that you get so many people to be playing this game for months and years on years on end. What are the what are the games like that right now? Very few, actually. And actually, in terms of PlayStation, because I know more about PlayStation stuff than others, is did you know that they were making a live service Last of Us game? Live uh, Last of Us Factions. Um. Yeah, and they wanted to to make it a game that you can play for years on end. And it got canceled, right? It got canceled. I remember the articles were like, um, it just, it just, it just wasn't sticky enough. Is what they th wait they talked about. It wasn't sticky enough. They need because for live service games you need stickiness, something like that. You need something for players to stick to for many many years, and it just wasn't there. And now you have. Naughty Dog, freaking talented ass developers. Even if they're not really, you know, too um, experienced with live service games, I guess. But they they're like freaking talented. They have PlayStation money, and they still couldn't make one that feels sticky enough. And you got ninety five percent of game developers making them. Which percent of these live service games are gonna be great <laughs> and are actually gonna stick, and which are just gonna burn to the ground? <laughs> Just because there's going to be so many. It's crazy. It's crazy. I guess technically GTA Online is a live service game. Kinda, right? They're making so much money. They're making so much money in GTA Online. Oh my god, it's crazy. <laughs> so you need to be something like GTA Online. You need to be something like Fortnite. You need to be something like, uh, you know, the gacha games that I can't mention. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's the kind of bar you need to reach. How can, how can anybody compete with that if you're not at that level? Destiny, right? Destiny, Destiny 2, right? Oh, burn like the new, su yeah, the new Suicide, the Suicide Squad game. I think, uh, I, I've seen like the impressions of that. And I was so surprised that that was going to be a live service game. I would have wanted that to be kind of like the Avengers, the new Avengers game. The, uh, not Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Where it's just a nice 10 to 20 hour story or stuff like that. However, I do see the appeal, I guess, of a live service game. If, if, especially if you make it big, you're going to make me so much money. You're going to support so much jobs, right? FE Heroes, yeah. FE Heroes... Yeah, you know, those kinds of games. Effie Heroes, I guess Grand Blue Fantasy fits into this too. Right? It's crazy. So, yeah, that's that's the one that's the one thing I was so surprised about. 95% are really seriously considering a live service game in their portfolio now. That's ooh. That's so much. So much. I think coming out from Square Enix is Foam Stars, right? It's like 
Is Splatoon? Is, you know, stuff like Splatoon considered live service? I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, <clears throat> but I think as long as it's a game that's supported for many years, different content drops, um, battle passes, or stuff like that, maybe. Maybe. Is making sure there's a balance between special events and the mainstay events to make sure there's still an appeal for newer players. Yeah, they always need to make sure that there's new players. It's I guess it's a balance between new players and getting whales. <laughs> getting whales into the live service game that you're making. Has set a limit to when content ends. I see, I see. Yeah, that's that's how it used to be before. Remember when games were like, here's Mass Effect. It's gonna have a multiplayer mode. It's gonna then we just support it until like a year and it's done. <laughs> Remember that time? Every single player game that came out came out with a multiplayer mode. That was a weird time, right? But at least when they did do that, they didn't have like ambitions of No, this multiplayer will last 10 years. <laughs> It, it literally just lasts the length of the lifetime of the game. But now, people are really, you know, trying to make games that'll be like Destiny. 10 plus years. Or Final Fantasy XIV. Yes, live service games, yes. Crazy. Is it? Is Hunt Showdown live service? Because I, I remember when we were playing with Ruse before we debuted. I noted that wow, this this interface is very mobile, mobile game looking. Did they make that live service? It's actually it's hard. Live service is still a bit nebulous when it comes to the definition of it, right? Still kind of weird. But yeah, that ninety five percent of developers that you know, five hundred sixty seven plus, five hundred sixty plus, five hundred sixty making live service games. Cool. Next article from Video Games Chronicle is something interesting because FF7 Rebirth is about to come out. An FF6 remake would take twice as long as FF7, says producer, to develop, I guess. Uh, FF7 remake producer Yoshinori Kitase was asked to elaborate on his previous comments regarding demand for FF6 remake. FF7 up to Rebirth has taken around 10 years to remake. And if Square Enix was to tackle FF6, he believes it could take double that. Um, Kitase said the game would be bigger than FF7's remake project because of the number of characters in the game. There are a lot of people inside the company who want to remake FF6, but he unfortunately can't respond, which burns him out. Leave the poor man alone! He's focused on seven. <laughs> 10 years for 7. Yeah, because FF7 still isn't done. Rebirth is gonna come out. It's still not done. They're still gonna develop the third title in the in the FF7 trilogy, I guess. So FF6, imagine FF6. All the characters there have their own scenarios, right? The FF6 is crazy because the characters go off in different directions all the time. Different, different combinations in different directions. <laughs> so it's crazy. At least for FF Seven, the characters are all at the in the same place at the same time most of the time. Whereas FF Six, you literally start in different places, you meet at different times, you separate. Then there's a whole thing about Kefka. Was it World of Darkness? I forgot what's going on there. I do want to see an FF6 remake, though. But I do want to see, most of all, a 9 remake. There was also rumors about, rumors about a 10 remake. Um, Yeah, kind of like Octopath Traveler. That's why you can definitely easily make FF6 again in the style of Octopath. But if you wanted to make it in the style of 7 remake... Oh my god. <laughs> <gasps> That's crazy. But I hope they still do it regardless. I hope they still do it regardless. But here are the last part. If reports are to be believed, an FF9 remake is more likely than a Final Fantasy VI one. 
Because remember... I guess we're not going to talk about this too much, but there was an NVIDIA kind of leak before. And it showed Final Fantasy IX remake. So... Hopefully... Hopefully... I'm just trying to imagine the beginning scene. You know, the scene where we kidnap... We kidnap Garnet to Alexandros during the play at the very beginning. And you need to role play the fight and stuff. And you're swinging. And you got Vivi. You got this nice Final Fantasy. Um, true, like, high fantasy Final Fantasy background with the music. And... Ah! <sighs> I want it. Nine is my favorite. That's why I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. I need it. I need it in my life. But yeah, F6 remake. Probably hard to make. Very hard to make. I'm so obsessed with it. Did you guys see the FF9 project by that involved, you know, the FF FF9 remake kind of project thing? Have you guys seen that? That's being made that was made by just by fans. I hope you've seen that. FF9 Memoria Project. Here if you haven't. It's a it's a really long video, so you can you can save it for later if you haven't. Ah! You know, even even that, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy if it just looked like that. If they make it like FF7, sure, I'd be even happier. But if it just looked like this, I'm down. I'm down. If they remake FF9 like Star Ocean 2 remake, I will be completely satisfied. Yes, exactly. If he, if they can remake it even just like second story R, whatever the title was, I'll be happy. For sure. But this... Uh, <laughs> oh, please, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. FF9 remake. My beloved! I feel like FF9 is underappreciated by a lot of people. A lot of people love 7 and 8. I mean, they're great. But please! And a lot of people were turned off by, like, the designs. Is this the designs or, like, the look of the characters in 9? But, ah! It's my absolute favorite. Okay. Next. Next thing is very specific to me. I love stuff like this so much from Push Square. Dragon's Dogma 2 confirms deliciously detailed photo mode. Not FF9 remake but a live service, no! <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 2 will have a photo mode and it looks brilliantly in-depth. The news comes via the game's official Japanese Twitter account, which has posted a new screenshot of the mode in action. It boasts a bunch of different settings to play around with, and you should prove and should prove to be popular given how dynamic the action RPG's gameplay appears to be. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just looking at the things here. I don't, you know, let me put it through a translator, like a Google image translator, so I can see what these options are. Right? Uh, let's see, let's see. Images. Let's see the translations here. Can it even translate? There we go. So we got camera rotation, camera position, reset, reset all settings. You got filter. You got screen effects, filter strength, lens distortion, lens distortion strength, chrom chromatic aberration, chromatic aberration intensity. Also, that's why that screenshot looks like that. Pretty cool. And there are other menus here that we don't see yet. So. Guys, I'm sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a DDDXP of Dragon's Dogma 2. And we're gonna be <laughs> taking a lot of pictures. <laughs> if the photo mode does indeed turn out be, to, to be really good. We're gonna be taking a lot of pictures. So... Dragon's Dogma 2 DDXP. When is Dragon's Dogma 2 releasing? I need to know again. I forgot. I forgot. March, right? March! Is it? Is it March? March 22! Ah! Kia! <laughs> Kia. Yeah. 
March 22, let's go! Let's go! I can't- I hate the fact that me and Ruse will be playing Dragon's Dogma 2 just alongside each other instead of together. Right? It's like that technique- it's like that thing that happens with babies. You know, solitary play? Parallel play. They don't play with each other, but they play next to each other. They play their own games next to each other. So, kind of like that. Same date as Rise of the Ronin. Oh. I saw my mama, Kazari Tayu, talk about Rise of the Ronin, and she really liked the look of it. So I'm like, ah, if mama Kazari Tayu really liked the look of Rise of the Ronin, I need to play it. I need to play it. So, next article from Push Square as well. Roundup. What was announced during Sony's State of Play for January 2024? And we're not going to spend too much on this, but we're just going to go through the things. We did do a watch along of it a few days ago. But the things I'm really interested in are, are something I didn't quite pick up. Was that the new... Hideo Kojima game is called Fizzint. Fizzint. And that's the one he was talking about that was an espionage, uh, action espionage game in the same vein, vein as Metal Gear. However, what I didn't, didn't catch was they, I guess they said it's being made for the next generation. See, it will be a brand new original IP a next-generation action espionage game. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means basically this is this is a very this is a very far out. This is very far out. I'm sure. Dra Death Stranding Two is gonna be their thing for a long time, and also their Xbox game that they're making. So, this is probably gonna be a PlayStation Six game. It's either they're referring to PlayStation 6. It might not even be PlayStation. Honestly, it could even just be, you know, just the wording. It's just a new, it's just a new espionage, new espionage action game, right? It could just be that, it could just be that. However, it'd be cool if it actually meant a next gen game. So that means PlayStation wants this somewhere around the release of PlayStation 6. They're going to. They're going to push PlayStation 6 so hard with Hideo Kojima's new freaking game, right? Yeah, PS5 Pro. I'm, I'm still waiting for the PS5 Pro. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to have all my my grubby hands all over that PlayStation 5 Pro so much. Not the slim, though. I'm not really too interested in the slim. I'm more interested in the pro. <laughs> so because I remember PlayStation, the launch launch game for PlayStation 3 was Metal Gear Solid 4. So it'd be perfect. Launch game for PlayStation 6 is Fizzent. F Fizzent. What does that mean? What does Fizzent mean? <laughs> Isn't Pheasant like a chicken? Or something? Fizzent. Fizzent doesn't mean anything. No, it's not a word. It's not a word. It's just a word for this new game. Yeah. <laughs> then we got Pheasant. Yeah, Pheasant is the bird. Then we got a lot of news about some news about the new Silent Hill stuff. Stellar Blade, April twenty six. Stellar Blade, I can't wait. I can't wait. I was so happy on Twitter that people are finally paying attention to Stellar Blade. And you know, I think this is gonna be a great game. Hopefully, hopefully, Stellar Blade. I'm not even talking about the cake. I don't even care about the cake. Whatever. It just looks really good. And then we found out in the trailer that it's probably more than just an action game. Like, there are some other mechanics to it. There are some other mechanics to it as well, not just full-on action game. Which is great, I think. Which is great. Rise of the Ronin looks really hecking good. I love the whole samurai with gun thing going on. Kind of like modern, modern-ish. I mean, it's still old samurai, but it was, it's moving on to the more modern era. Of Samurais? Samurai with gun? So cool. Have I tried Nikkei yet? No, I haven't tried Nikkei yet. <laughs> uh, maybe I should. 
<laughs> but that's a lot of cake. Nick has a lot of cake. Yeah, near Automata vibes, sure, of course, yes. Then Ken Levine's Judas. Judas from the guys who made the Bioshock games. They have a new game. It looks really good. Judas. I don't like the title. Title is fine, I guess. But the game itself looks really good. Then I know Ruse was happy about Sonic Shadow Generations. A lot of a lot of a lot of the people I follow on Twitter are super happy about Sonic Shadow Generations. Um, I'm not really much of a Sonic guy, but yay! Yay! Congratulations to the Sonic people. <clears throat> to the Sonic lovers, Lady Gaga's Judas, yeah. <laughs> um, we got a new Metro, Metro game for PSVR 2, actually. Then, Dave the Diver collab with Godzilla. <laughs> Uh, David Diver collab, Godzilla collab. That's crazy. Then, some Dragon's Dama 2. Nice. I need that game just for Shadow. Yeah, a lot of people are fans of Shadow. I mean, I get it. I get it. I look at him. He's super cool. But, I, yeah, I'm not really too much of a Sonic fan. <laughs> I want to turn Godzilla into... I wonder if you can actually turn Godzilla into sushi. I wonder. So yeah, that's the roundup for the state of play, which is really heckin' cool. I love that so much. Then, let's move. He love Latinas too. <laughs> the next article, really short article for this next one. I just found this interesting. There was an Among Us animated series coming out. What? From Video Games Chronicle, CBS and Intersloth have released a teaser image of their Among Us animated series. What? Oh, I can just imagine. Are they gonna are they gonna attach personalities to these colors? <laughs> are they gonna Oh man, I can already see. I can already see how crazy people are gonna be for this TV show. I can already see all the art, the fan art, everything that'll be made by everyone when this releases. I bet red is sus, yes. I wonder how many... How many community memes... They're gonna include... In this one. And here's, here's what I wish. I wish... It's gonna be silly, I guess. It's still Among Us. But I wish this is gonna be... You know, kind of like a Knives Out situation. Where you really do not know. or Not really do not know, but at least it's very thrilling. I hope... It's very thrilling in the sense that it's going to be a, a bunch of murder mysteries going on. I hope it's like that, right? I hope it's going to be a serious like murder mystery so bad, even through all the silliness, right? Then by the end, it'll be revealed who, who, are the, who the imposters are, and it's going to blow our minds. What? I wish. I hope it's going to be like that. That you can really take the story seriously. And not just, you know, a, you know, a comedy or something. Yeah, unless they're making it for the kids. Yeah, true, true. Uh, I hope, I hope it's like a deep, really deep murder mystery. We'll see, we'll see. The art style looks good. I like the art style. Animated show is progressing nicely. Sci-fi thriller Dead Space. <laughs> it's Tit Mouse Probs not. Aw, really? Infinity Train. I don't even know what Infinity Train is. Oh, I wish it was a, like a serious... Well, not really serious. It's still being comedy. But it's like a serious story. Serious murder mystery. That'd be so cool. Then last article for today is... I'm super happy about this. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth is the 30th game to earn a coveted Famitsu 40. Now, if you aren't um, familiar with Famitsu, is there like this uh, magazine, I guess, in Japan that reviews games? And very few games get perfect scores in their thing. It's, it's kind of like a prestige thing. So it's kind of like Michelin stars, stuff like that, kind of. But not really as big as that. But, you know, it's the 30th game in the whole history of Famitsu to get... A full perfect score. Um, 
in order to get a Famitsu 40, the game needs to unanimously get a perfect 10 from all four reviewers. This has now only happened 30 times since the magazine first launched in June 1986. The other games that got a Famitsu 40 were stuff like Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and Street Fighter 6, and Nintendogs. <laughs> so it's still kind of weird. It's still kind of weird, but it's this is still a prestige thing, I guess. I wonder if this is actually um, important in Japan, I wonder. Um... But I, I do remember back like in the PlayStation 3 days. Who 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 got Famitsu? Who got who have Famitsu 40? <clears throat> let's see, let's see. Who have scored perfect scores in Famitsu? We got uh Death Stranding, cool. Dragon Quest 11. Breath of the Wild, Metal Gear Solid 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle, Yakuza 5. Damn, Yakuza 5 already. Oh, cool. I love Yakuza 5. Yakuza 5 has a three protagonists, right? Yeah, it is. Four protagonists are three protagonists. Um, 13-2. Really? Elder Skyrim, Skyward Sword, Black and White, Pokemon Black and White, Peace Walker, Peace Walker! I love Peace Walker! Oh my god! Bayonetta, Monster Hunter Try, Shibuya Scramble? The first and only visual novel to receive a perfect score. Shibuya Scramble? I need to play it! I wonder if I have perms. We have perms for that. Regular Solid 4, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Final Fantasy 12, yeah, that was that was what I was super happy about long ago. Final Fantasy 12, so many Final Fantasies, but Final Fantasy 12 was the one I got got a, got a perfect score. Um, and 13 too, which is weird. <laughs> uh, I love Final Fantasy 12 as well. Nintendo Dogs, uh, Wind Walk Waker, Vagrant Story. Damn, I also need to play Vagrant Story. I've never finished. I have never, yeah, I've never finished Vagrant Story. Soul Calibur, the original one, and Ocarina of Time. I love 13-2. I did like 13-2, actually. I did like the time travel thing that I had going on. Even the gameplay and stuff. And I am a, I am a stan of one-sided hair, ponytail. What's that called? I love one-sided ponytail. Ponytail on one side. Pretty cool! <laughs> oh wait, why is my schedule still here? Still here. Side pony! Yeah, side tail! Like Sarah, exactly. So Sarah is like... So, let's check out Sarah, 13-2. I love Sarah, by the way. So Sarah in 13-2, pink hair, side ponytail, Zetai Ryoiki. Yep. Everything. They, they went ham with making that design <laughs> for a specific, specific audience. <laughs> ah, but yeah, I think I like 13 2 more than 13. Though I haven't played Lightning Returns. I need to, I need to do Lightning Returns soon. Okay. Let's get into the final, the final, final questions. Not too many questions, actually, um, that I included here. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh! We got a big one. We got a big one. This was submitted by Trixie. I need your help with this one. I need your help with this one. So, <sighs> damn. Damn! How do I- I need to summarize this. I can't read all of it. I can't read all of it. So, five to six years ago, Trixie had a guy that she really liked. Let's call him Uno, right? Um, one of the few guys in my school who was actually decent by my standards, right? I, I liked him for five to six years and never confessed because... One, I myself realized the nature of my feelings late 
And two, I was scared of wrecking our friendship. And three, because I'm delusional, I genuinely thought he could like me back and wanted him to be the one to make the first move. <laughs> Damn! Trixie is badass, huh? Um, but anyway, eventually, the guy started seeing someone else. And it really sucked. Um, besides the fact that I really had been pining for Uno for three years at that point, his new partner caught onto her feelings, onto Trixie's feelings, and really, really hated Trixie for it. Now, so the girl that Uno got with is now like mad at Trixie because she knows Trixie has feelings for this guy, right? And it went to the point, the worst thing they did though was straight up telling Uno to cut ties with Trixie. Which was crazy considering he and I, and Trixie, have been good friends, friends since we were like 8 years old. Okay? They went even went as far as to delete Uno and Trixie's entire chat history on Uno's phone. A chat history significantly older than their relationship. <laughs> Eventually, I decided it just wasn't worth all the energy. Uh, all the energy. And apparently he did too because we ended up drifting apart. Okay. Alright. I like how I like how Trixie included that fact too. <laughs> Our conversation thread is way longer than whatever you have with him. <laughs> Damn, Uno. Is this Uno handsome? The heck? In his absence, I started getting closer to his best friend. Let's call him Dos. Dos had a reputation for being a bit of a heartbreaker and, well, Paasa. By Paasa... Paasa is a term we use for someone who kind of makes weird moves for you to fall in lo love or for you to like him, but will never reciprocate it. Something like that. Um, he leads you on, yeah, he leads you on. But was generally still very, pretty popular because he was just as much a goody two-shoes as he was a Paasa. <laughs> Anyways, we started getting close and despite not having moved on from Uno... I developed feelings for Dos. Gross! He said. Uh, Tr Trixie said, not me. He reciprocated those feelings. And we, be and we got together a little while after. Alright. So. <laughs> Trixie got together with Uno's best friend. Um, because she was sad and wanted to get over Uno badly. So. Dos. Oh wait. Oh, Dos is an ex now. Anyway, that's 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 a future. That's a future. We're gonna talk about this when Trixie basically got together with Uno's best friend. Uh. <laughs> My question in relation to all of this exposition exposition is, what do you think about using someone else to get over someone, like a rebound? I know it's sort of a sucky thing to do. But I also know it's become more and more common and even encouraged in today's culture. So it would, it would be nice to hear Oct take on that. Sorry again for the dump. I'm not... Okay. So... <laughs> VTuber, turn back now. The Lizard of Palace are not for a kind. Turn back or he'll be crossing the will of God. So the question Trixie poses is... What do you guys think about using other people to get over someone else? Uh, Debussy, tell us. I don't like rebound because you're being dishonest to you and the one you're using. Sorry, Trixie. Um, here's here's the thing. I actually don't consider this. Is this actually considered rebound? Um, I for me personally, I'd only consider something a rebound if you actually got together with the first person. Because in this case. Trixie never even got together with the first person. So, you can't really use this other person. Now, th th there's another side here that's a bit different. But for me, that's when I that's when I consider rebound. If you use another person to get over your past actual like relationship. You know? 
Yes, because you... Oh, really? Is that what you guys consider rebound? For example, um, so it's, it's just enough for you, for you guys to like, to like someone. And you're using another person to get over your like for someone. Cool. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah, because my definition of rebound was using someone else to get over kind of like the sadness or your whatever that you get from a failed relationship. From a failed, a fra failed previous relationship. Okay. I see. I see. Hmm. Hmm. Honestly, I'm. It's this is not this is not a you know this is not uh, any. Uh, I'm not trying to offend anyone here. I'm not trying to attack you or something or singly or whatever stuff like that. But per just for me personally, I don't really like the idea of rebounds, right? But in this case, I think I'm okay with it just because they. Again, I have my standard is. You know, it, they should be in a past relationship. Um, but in this case, I feel like it's not too reboundy. It's like half rebound for me. But if it's like a full rebound where you use someone else to get over for the, literally the, ex the purpose of getting over someone else, they kind of, I don't like it. Um, I don't like it just because you're using someone. You're... It's so hard. It's so hard, right? Because here's the thing. Trixie likes this other person, right? Trixie also still likes Dos. So another another thing for me with rebounds is you don't actually like this second person. You're just using them. So that's my kind of definition of rebound. So if you use someone else... You don't even like, or you kind of just like, you, you're not really with the express kind of, with the express purpose of dumping them later. That's, that's a rebound thing to me. But in this case for Trixie, Trixie actually likes those. Even if there's this other layer of the thing with Uno. Uh, Kang Kong, hot take. Yes to using someone else to get over Uno. But only as long as you and your new boy mutual understand your emotional capacities. True. Don't dive into a whole relationship. Just enjoy some. Yeah. If it's if it's mutual between you and Dos, that this is just, you know, a thing. Just a thing. It's not super serious or something like that. Then I think that's fine. But if you're promising Dos like they're a real, you're going to be extremely serious with dose for a long time then that's not what i'm what i i'm i don't like that <laughs> it was i'll protect i'll project my feelings onto you instead and hope it sticks oh no sort of thing and in my defense he admitted to using me to get over someone and got together with oh my god what not the double whammy <laughs> <laughs> well that that's a plot twist <laughs> that's the plot twist holy crap <laughs> okay uno reverse <laughs> she got parried holy crap I never expected that kind of again <laughs> twist to this <laughs> there's an anime with this plot oh my god so yeah like I said if you really like Dos then I don't think there's a problem with it now what Dos did to you that's how that's a that's a different thing altogether that guy <laughs> that guy used you as a rebound like a real rebound <laughs> but you know if in, in that case, if you really like those and you really want it to be serious, because sometimes you just, we have different coping mechanisms, right? We have different ways to uh, kind of soothe our own emotions and stuff like that. And if that's yours, then um, sure. But I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not like your dad. I'm not your dad. I'm saying I'm okay with what you did. Uh, it's more like, 
it's fine because Trixie liked those for me. But if you literally just pick this guy because he's his best friend, and then ha, <laughs> I'm getting back at Uno. I'm getting back at Uno with you going getting with your best friend who don't don't even like. <laughs> I'm gonna kiss him in front of you. Then no, that's I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for me honestly uh i'd rather if you know you you go over your emotions and your feelings on your own first and when you're completely ready that's when you enter into a new relationship you know that's that's my side of the coin there just so it's not messy just so it's not potentially messy you know <laughs> that's too petty for even me that's your trixie impression <laughs> i mean trixie is the fire red rebellion leader among the marionettes so kind of <laughs> that's the impression what is webtoon plot not the wattpad has trixie moved on from uno that's a question can you look at those without having to look back at Uno? Now, I have a feeling that because Trixie framed this as like a rebound thing, I have a feeling that Trixie still does hold feelings for Uno. And that's what makes things a bit messy. You're all going to be moment when I tell you more about what he did. Okay, okay, spill the tea. Spill the tea. <laughs> spill the materia. Where was that? Where was that? Where was that? I think it's time to bust that out. Where is it? Where is it? Uh... You know what? Maybe a cup of coffee wasn't a good idea. Maybe you need some materia. Where was it? You know what? Maybe a cup of coffee wasn't a good idea. Maybe you need some materia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else is here? Gibby, you need to fix your car. Bring it to a mechanic. I know one. They're called Cindy's Nuts. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Soundboard too low? Don't tease me with a good time. You know what? Maybe you know what? Maybe a cup of coffee, coffee wasn't, a wasn't a good idea. Maybe you need maybe some, you need some materia. materia. <laughs> Trixie already spilled her tea. Uh, wait, Rio Senpai, Rio Senpai, thanks so much for the re for the redirect. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please say hi to Rio Senpai. Everybody coming from Rio Senpai's stream. Thank you for joining. Rio Senpai's redirect. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we were just talking about some. We were talking about some uh, relationship advice. <laughs> kind of going on here. Uno and I are still best friends, but sometimes I look at him and think, wait, and then come, oh no. Oh no. But hey, Rio and everybody from Rio Senpai Stream, thank you so much for coming here. I hope you guys have a great stay. Actually, I'm honestly, I've been kind of experimenting with a subtitle thing that auto translates the things I say into Japanese. And I was setting it up earlier, but I wasn't able to fully set it up because all the instructions and the interface was in Japanese. So I didn't have I didn't have a lot of time to do that. So too loud. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been setting it up. It's just it's just a bit difficult. The interface for the Jap the English subtitles to Japanese is very difficult to set up. Um very cool, but potentially dangerous auto. Yeah, true, true. Though I did try it, and it does a good job of um, translating, actually. Um, maybe even better than this one. I mean, I think it's snappier than the one I'm using right now. Because this one, for some reason, kind of gets stuck sometimes. Um, but hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Uh, can we have a poll with chat? Like, Tito Boy Fast Talk. Only one Fast Talk per Octog. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> what? What are you suggesting? What kind of... 
Oh, we did that last time with pancake and waffles. Um. Oh. We can do that, actually. Do you guys want to do that? Let's just see. Was Trixie's... Was no, Trixie's situation... Wasn't a good idea. Oh my god, why is it playing? Was Trixie's situation a rebound or not to you? I guess that's a question. Oh man, we're de see, we're developing the show. Now we get to ask if it's a it was a rebound or not. Okay, let's let's get the poll going. I'm so good at YouTube now. I can do polls now. It's crazy. Rebound. Yes. No. Yes. No. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so feel free to answer that. No, no, no. But thank you, Trixie, for uh, sharing your story here. Um, you know, uh, I want to. See, I want to see what this is. You posted here that there is something more to the story. <laughs> There is something more to the stories. So I'm like, hmm. Hmm? I'm interested. I'm, inter I'm interested to see what's going on. What is this more to the story? Oh, wait. Maybe the question was, is it okay? Is it okay to rebound or... I don't Whatever. We can, we can do that for now. <laughs> it was. Re oh, it was. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I always... I had a... I had a thing where really rebound is just if you had a previous relationship with a guy and you're literally just using the guy like completely no feelings at all involved you're just you're just you're just trying to be petty you know something like that <laughs> so yeah um think that's permission that i can put yeah sure post part two i want to see i want to see how <laughs> especially now that you shared what dose did to you it's kind of scary <laughs> he he reverse uno you. That was funny. It was funny. But thank you, Trixie, for sharing that with us. Thank you, thank you. No judgment here. We're just sharing our thoughts, you know. Um, but I'm interested to see what's what's next in this story. Be pretty cool. Now, this story makes me want to move forward with that idea that I was talking about long ago. The MMK idea. Where you guys share, where if you have a big story that you can share, then I'm gonna like make a small like film of it in puppet style, puppet style kind of film. And at the end, we're gonna talk about it. It's gonna be very dramatic, it's gonna be dramatized. So it might be a little bit more exaggerated than the original story, you know? I might, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start thinking about how best to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, MMK, yeah. <laughs> we need that. Well, we're, th then we're going to make a big stream event out of it. Multiple times. Maybe a few times... Uh, a few times a year. <laughs> Give us royalties? Nah. Nah. There's going to be a thing on the Google form. Anything you put here is now mine. <laughs> yeah, dramatic music. Exactly. We got letter reading as well. I'm going to make a set where I'm sitting down. I mean, dear Octavio, I am Trixie, writing to you today about something, something, something. <laughs> then cut to the flashback. It's like, hey, hey, Uno. Oh, Trixie, how are you? Oh, you're so good. Yeah, you're so great. You're so handsome. Then, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, Trixie, I'm seeing girl number one now. And Trixie's like, Oh, really? Where did you... Where, that girl? That girl sucks. But Trixie, I love her. You need to not do that. Then girl number one is like, huh, Wait, I noticed you've been looking at Uno. <laughs> I noticed you've been looking at Uno in a weird way. Do you love him? And Trixie's like, hmm, You know what? I don't... I, whatever. I'm not going to confirm anything or deny. Then girl, a, girl one is going to be, Oh, you love him! Mahal Musha! Mahal Musha! 
Lumayo ka sa kanya! <laughs> then, then Dos, then scene with girl one and Dos is gonna be like, Dos, kung hindi mo i-delete ang mga mensahe sa'yo ni Trixie, maghihiwalay na tayo! If you don't delete the messages from Trixie, we will uh, break up. And Trixie was like, Ang mga mensahe namin mas mahaba kaysa sa buong relasyon niyo! The messages we have is longer than your whole relationship. <laughs> Walang hiya ka! <laughs> Walang makaka... Walang... <laughs> I was about to say something. Well, what's something good to say? <laughs> um, wait, I'm thinking about something to say. Damn, my brain is not braining. Uh, I well, you're nothing but you're nothing but the second rate, trying hard copycat. Ow! I actually slapped myself. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I can't believe you brought a wildflower to this house. <laughs> uh, bro, do you see Paco Sensei was watching Wildflower? Oh my god. Are these from TV shows? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> you know, those uh, those very melodramatic uh, TV shows, soap operas, soap operas, yeah. Yeah. Insane. Insane. Ah, <sighs> we should do that. I want to do that in the future. Ah, I want to do that in the future. We should do that. It's so, so fun. <laughs> They'll bring out a gun too. They'll bring out a white van that's going to kidnap. <laughs> a white van is going to kidnap Trixie. And Dose is gonna be like, Uno! Kinidnap si Trixie at wala ka pa rin pakialam! Hindi mo ba siya kaibigan mula ng pagkabata? Dose is like, Uno, Trixie was kidnapped in a white van. Do you still not care for her even if you were friends for since childhood? <laughs> Uh, Aizenor, thank you for doing that copycat. But those, <laughs> thank, thank you so much for the supa, though. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, as far as Menchi since day one, I hate you, YT. I kind of just have sad stories that repeated. Would you mind asking for advice to get over? for To get over stuff? Oh! Easy. Getting over stuff? Easy. It's, <laughs> it's... There's a lot of playing games, though. A bunch of playing games. A bunch of putting... Putting... Your efforts and time into things like, you know, into creative things, you know, like streaming. I don't know, like art, because honestly, for me, getting over things is a matter of just really going full, full ham into like, I don't know, creating a cover or something like that. You know, mixing for three days straight or something like that, you know? I mean, it differs for a lot of people, but I feel like that works for me. Just putting your mind to something completely. So you just, then just with time, you'll forget about it. You know? Something like that. Um, and then there's a bomb and explosions at the end. <laughs> there was an attempt at being buried alive. <laughs> ah. I, I want to do that so much, okay? If ever you guys submit a story for that thing, um, there is going to be a clause there that it's okay for Octavio to take creative liberties on your story to make it more engaging. <laughs> Bro knows all the novella tropes. No way, nom nom. Thank you for the super. Thank you. <laughs> ah... 
Next, next question is submitted by Alice Kuriyama five five three eight. If Armis were a family, what role would you have? <laughs> I mean, this is this is a joke question, I guess. Um, but imagine Armis as a family, little Timmy, right? Gibby, easily the mother. Ruse, easily the father. Right. I. I don't. Little brother, the son, uncle, <laughs> uncle. <laughs> um. If I were in the family, what would I want to be? Big sister. Yeah, I don't want to be the big sister. I am the big sister. The youngest is Gerard, and I'm the big sister. That's what's up. Yes. Yes. Why? Why is there an uncle in, in Armis? <laughs> <laughs> Gerard is a family dog. <laughs> Gerard is a family dog, and I'm the only child. Let's go. That's it! That's it! Gerard, family dog, I'm the only child! Woo! <laughs> Gerard can just bust it, burst in your room at any time <laughs> and won't lock the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, feels good. Feels good. Only child, family dog. Gerard, family dog. Ruse, father, Gibby, mother, little Timmy. Wait, little Timmy? Who's little, little Timmy? The heck? Also, yes. Looks like the votes are yes that the thing was a rebound. Damn. Now, now I've learned. Rebound goes more. Is Has less requirements. Dress up the dog as a dino, yeah? <laughs> Wait, who's little Timmy? Little Timmy? <gasps> the adopted child, I guess. Adopted child, yeah. Uh, because Ruse and Gibby have spent way too much time streaming. They can't make a child anymore, so they just adopt little Timmy. Oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> what a weird family. Four men and little Timmy. Four men and a child. I guess. What is this lore? I know, right? <laughs> Excuse me? What's going on? Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you so much for the question. Alice Kuriyama 5538. 5538. Let's see. Now, what are the other questions here? Not a lot more questions, actually. Um, I think the last question here is, if you could sort each of your genmates and your senpais into Taylor Swift eras, which ones would they be and why? Hope you have fun with this question. Castle Garden 2999. This is pretty difficult, actually. Taylor Swift eras for all the Armis members. Um, Let's see. You know, Reputation is my favorite, but I'm not Reputation. Yeah, I'm not Reputation. Uh, but it's my favorite. It's still my favorite. I think, nah. Yeah, fearless for ruse in auto. Yeah, exactly. Love story. Yes, I think I am. Yeah, I am. Nineteen eighty nine. I am the Taylor Swift right before she went full reputation. I'm right there, you know. Not, not too wholesome and not too spicy as well. Right, not too wholesome, not too spicy. Yes, tier list, tier list idea as well in the future, yes. Gerard, is Gerard reputation? I have a feeling Gerard should be like... <laughs> nah, Ger Gerard can't be before 1989. He can't be before 1989. Um, I actually wanted to give Gerard speak now. <laughs> oh, see? I wanted to give Gerard speak now because that's what he does. He just speaks now. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and they speak now has like the mean as well. Why I gotta be so mean? Because people are mean to him. <laughs> I I think speak now would be perfect for Gerard. Yeah, yeah. Um, for for Gibby, for Gibby, I'm actually thinking fearless. <laughs> <laughs> fearless. It's either fearless or folklore or evermore. Either of those. Um, folklore evermore just because it's comfy. Fearless. I think fearless is also it can be Gibby. Yeah, actually, folklore and evermore might be the thing about folklore and evermore. They might be too too mellow because Gibby isn't completely mellow. And he isn't like super like oh no 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 he is cozy but he, he he can get crazy um but I think Gibby can fit fearless like the vibes fearless now we go to love now we go to ruse ruse we said Ruse was fearless as well for Love Story, but let's try and go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit deeper into Ruse. Ruse. Should Ruse be after reputation? <clears throat> Could Ruse be <clears throat> midnight? I think Ruse might be Midnight. Yeah, because Ruse is a little more complex. <laughs> I'm not saying uh, the others are not complex, but I feel like Ruse fits in this Midnight's thing where it's, um, you know, a more complex Taylor Swift, right? <laughs> Ruse is red. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about that. Ruse is red because he's red. But I feel like on a deeper level... Ruse can be midnight. Yes. Yeah, he can. He can both go sing bejeweled, and suddenly just bust out like, uh, "I have this thing, everybody, do sexy baby." You know, something like that. Ruse is from the vault. <laughs> yeah, anti-hero, exactly. Vigilante, vigilante shit, yeah? Yeah! Okay! I think Ruse can be Midnight. Midnight, then we got Gerard as Speak Now. Then we got Gibby as Fearless. <laughs> fearless, I love it. I love Fearless for Gibby. Then I am 1989. Ah, oh, I want to get Reputation in here. Could we could we include Tempest here? Can, can we include Tempest? Let's see. Let's see where Tempest fits. Who gets reputation among Tempest? Axel? Is reputation for Axel? <laughs> I feel like I feel like Axel can fit reputation. Axel or Haka? Ha There's something about Haka. I feel like he needs to be... He needs to be around... Damn. Haka... I think Haka can go red? I don't know, red. Hmm. Could Haka be red? Let me check. Let me check. What the heck for the songs in red again? I keep I keep mistaking red and 1989. Where is it? Where is it? Hmm. <clears throat> I knew you were trouble. We are never ever getting back together. Okay. I put Haka in red. <laughs> I put Haka in red. <laughs> okay. 
Um. Yeah. Haka is red. Axel is reputation. You know, because of Dick and Malls. <laughs> yeah, Shinri can either be folklore or evermore. Uh, Altair, lover. Could it be? Yes, Altair, lover. Altair, lover. Yes. Damn. Ah, I want to be lover too. God damn it. <laughs> All too well tended version. Haka style. Uh, Altair is lover. Shinri. Shinri can actually be folk more and folklore and evermore. Um. Now where is ha where is Flayon in this and Betel? Oh my god. <laughs> Metal is Taylor Swift. Metal is debut. <laughs> Metal is debut. I don't know why. <laughs> because he plays guitar. Teardrops on my guitar. Tim McGraw. <laughs> uh, Metal is the first one. Debut album. Oh my god. Oh my god! Metal is debut album! Holy crap! Flayon, Flayon is Midnight's... Ugh. I want to avoid giving people the same thing, though. Flayon definitely can't be folklore. Can't be Evermore. Damn, I, we can't... I guess we can't really... We can't really avoid getting... Samesies. Red, 1989. Reputation. Flan Midnight's? I think I actually kind of agree. Because Flan is also very complicated to me. <laughs> Flan is very complex to me as well. Antihero, Envious, true. I guess, I guess Ruse and Flan can share in Midnight's. So wait. Now the question is, is Ruse and Fleon the same? I mean, not really the same. Do they share the same vibe? I guess they can... They can be half. Half, half Midnight's. They can take half of Midnight's. Take their own half. <laughs> They're not the same, but... Yeah, the complex boys go to Midnight. So the rest of the the rest of these boys are not complicated. God damn it. Uh, I wanna be a lover though. God damn it. Uh. I assigned Altair to lover, but not myself. Lover! Okay. Then Shinri is the special one with the folklore and evermore. I mean, these are the these are Taylor Swift's uh pandemic albums. And they're all comfy. So, they can have, Shinri can have both of them, both of them. Ooh, one of the 3M version, the other is Till Dawn version. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Shinri can have both this. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we did it. Is this considered a kin list? Is that considered a kin list? I don't know. <laughs> Are we kin singing Taylor Swift songs? <laughs> I can't assign it, Battle, but he's London boy. <laughs> Battle is a song. I don't think you can kin albums. Honestly, guys, I still don't know what a kin list is. I'm not sure what it is. Haka explained it to me, but I'm still not sure. Like, for example, if somebody says, make a kin list of Tempest Armis. Kingdom Hearts. What am I supposed to do? Am I just supposed to attach them to a character? Is that what's going on? Is where you relate to someone or something? Is someone you relate to? <sighs> Characters they would be or something like that. So yeah, so I, I basically just assign a character... To the Tempest or Armis. Kin list is you are them. Project. You feel like represents you. 
So, oh, so you're basically like kinning. For example, here, uh, I like to kin me with uh, an album. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. But why? Why did people make it seem like it's us? Why do people make it seem like it's us? Is it not sus or is it? I remember when Haka posted on Twitter is like, oh, he does not know what a kin list is. And people are like, oh no. Octavio, so innocent. <clears throat> Some people take kinning way too seriously, like they're actually that character. Oh. Ah, uh, it's like psychoanalyzing too. There's a cringe rep. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. It's got a reputation for people taking it overboard and like most things. Okay, based around. I see, I see, I see. I can see that being insane, like really intense for like stuff like Dang and Rampa or something. You know those kinds of fandoms. Yeah, Flayon Kins Nagito Komaida. Ah, I see, I see. So Kin list. But you kin people with other characters. You you kind of kin kin assign them. Like they they're them for fur. They them for fur. For for real. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I see. I shall now kin Kingdom Hearts characters to Tempest and Armis one day. Right. I shall we shall see. We shall see what I'm gonna do about that. But that is the end for the member submitted questions. And finally, we are going to go to. Wait. Ruse. Ruse. Goofy. Ruse. Is this not real? The Saturday thing? You need to tell me, Ruse. I'm not goofy. The heck? Next schedule. Next schedule is. Actually, I did say I was going to do this, right? Wait. <laughs> uh, let's torture people even more than they already are. Okay. For the schedule... For this week, <laughs> see, finally, I did it. Finally, I did it. Also, the art was made by, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? <laughs> He's cropping. Yeah, see, I've unlocked a hundred percent of my power. Unlocked a hundred percent. I can now crop images so you don't see everything immediately in one glance and you react and you react to it like Wham! oh no on sunday he's gonna do this wow so the art was made by orange tart it's actually a birthday rex art it's pretty cool pretty cool okay so i wonder if i'm gonna do this correctly first on monday we're gonna be doing ah oh, god damn it still shows it still shows! It still shows. What the heck? Uh, I guess I can't do it. I can't do it. I just need, I need to type really fast. I need to type really fast. So, Monday, Final Fantasy 16, Endurance. Okay? Endurance for Final Fantasy 16. Then, on Tuesday, I'm gonna do it really fast, okay? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Hold alt and left click drag the source. Alt left click drag the source. Oh, oh my God. You're so good. You're so good. You have the knowledge. Of a million fathers combined. You are incredible, Ruse. Why? 
You're such a Gen Z. You're so Gen Z. Oh my god, I can just do that? Bro, thank the Lord Almighty that you are part of Armis. Your successes are my successes too. Okay, so Final Fantasy 16 for tomorrow, Monday. There's going to be an endurance stream well, as much as I can. It's been a while since I played Final Fantasy 16. Uh, there's not going to be a summary for the previous stream for this because I reviewed the VOD. Literally nothing happened. <laughs> it's just side quests. Nothing happened. We just played some stuff. We just did things, okay? Nothing happened. So no summary of the previous stream because nothing happened. It's stuff did happen, but it was more side quest stuff, not really important too much of the story, just side quests. Um next stream is gonna be on Tuesday, Needy Streamer Overload. Finally, we're gonna be playing this. Is this about me? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a needy streamer. Heck no, I'm a streamer, not a needy streamer. Then on Wednesday is gonna be F7 Rebirth State of Play in the morning. We're going to be watching the State of Play. It's just going to be a small watch along. It's just going to be an hour. An hour because that whole day is going to be dedicated to Gerard T. Rexford's birthday. Birthday Rex. Birthday Rex. Birthday Rex. Uh, this is State of Play. This is not the actual game. This is the State of Play. Just the D Nintendo Direct. Just a PlayStation Direct ver uh, video or whatever. Premiere. Whatever. Of PlayStation. Then Gerard's birthday. I don't know what Gerard's birthday. Something's going to happen. I just, I don't actually don't know. No! I guess you will never see. You will never see my schedule anymore because YouTube doesn't want you to see my schedule. YouTube doesn't want you to see what's going on. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. Uh, then on Thursday is going to be. Damn, I scheduled this Madison finale. Finally, we're going to be doing the Madison finale on Thursday. So remember, we played Madison, right? Then it took a while for us to get back. So we finally have we finally have time to finish it. OK, then. On Friday, cooking. We're going to be cooking on Friday. All right. Then on Saturday is going to be Armist D&D collab. But now that I'm checking, now that I'm checking the friggin DMs, it looks like it's not real. Well, Ruse was, Ruse was... Talking, I mean, Ruse was sleeping earlier. Then I asked Gerard, did Ruse ever confirm the Armist DND? Is it real? But anyway, there's gonna be an Armist collab here, probably. Very likely, very likely. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna be DND. It's probably gonna be something. So uh but it's real. Ah, okay, Gerard has no okay, okay. It's real! It's real! Don't don't you don't share, you know, misinterpreted news, okay? Everything is real on this stream. Real. It's real. Okay. Next is... Ha <laughs> 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 After the collab. After the collab, there is going to be a stream from me. So. Whatever it is. Well. It's not a membership stream. It's not a, it's not a menchi. It's not a menchi. I actually don't have a menchi this week. Because I did two menchies last week. <laughs> so, something is happening on the 10th after our collab, whatever that may be. Armist DD. Yeah, yeah. Armist DD. 
The time is not set? Yeah, because I don't know when Ruse is... <laughs> when... How long our D&D is gonna be. <laughs> our D&D can be four hours, can be eight hours. So. So it's just, it's gonna be after that, okay? And, and as I said, Ruse was asleep earlier. I couldn't ask him. <laughs> I couldn't ask him. And lastly, of course, is Octox and Octavio. See? See? Something on the 10th. Make it a short session. Probably on the third of <laughs> Okay. So what, whatever that is. If it's 34 hours, then it's going to be the next day, okay? <laughs> God damn. Uh, are we in contract? Did I sign a contract for that? 34 hours? <laughs> All right. All right. But that's it. That is the stream streams for next week. Hope you guys enjoy that. <clears throat> that's going to be a fun time. But I'm definitely very excited for Saturday. I hope you like what's dropping on Saturday. Did I say dropping? Streaming, I mean. What's going on this Saturday? No menchi, because we had already had two menchis this week. And I'm still cooking. I'm still cooking the cursed menchi. Okay? All right! But guys, that's it for us. That's it for us. Thank you so much for coming to... Octox with Octavio. And ah, another fun Octox. I love also playing Silent Hill. It's so fun talking with you guys, kinda, maybe. Yeah, I mean, puppets, yeah. Ooh, woo! <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. But you're a puppet. You, you have no, you have no choice but to listen to me. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? You guys listen to me because you're forced to because of my strings, right? Could this be a lore drop? Who knows? <laughs> but guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you. We talked about so many things. We talked about so many things going on. Some nice spicy, spicy stuff as well. And some cool news that we talked about. We talked about a lot of games. Pretty fun. Excited for the week to come. Excited for a week that is to come next next week as well. And yeah. <laughs> Your imaginary puppets were not real. <laughs> Keeping two eyes on you, Mr. Octavio. Alright, but guys, thank you so much for watching. And who can we raid? Who can we raid today? Who is streaming? Tell me. Tell me who be streaming. Oh, by the way, also I have a little announcement to make for Twitch. I don't have a puppet battle stream next week, right? But I will still be streaming on Twitch. And these are gonna be these are gonna be heckin'. This is what's gonna happen. I'll be playing things on Twitch. And they're gonna be gorilla streams. So we gorillaing. We be gorillying. The plan is I'm gonna be gorillying a lot this week. So those are just gonna be chill, chill streams, not like big. Wow, you know, you can join them. You can put them put in the background while I stream and stuff like that. We can still talk and do things and and it's just a normal stream, but a little more casual, I guess. Uh, but yeah, all right. So redirect, redirecting. We shall redirect to. Damn it. Oh, they're streaming, but I can't directly redirect to them. What is going on? Um, right, because it's weekend. I I really need to get on that. I really need to get on that thing. Who shall we raid? I wanna I wanna raid Miyabi Senpai. Let's let's do a. Let's do a manual raid. Guys, please, let's do a rep manual raid. Say, let's Octo Party. Octo Party, let's Octo Party. Woo! Manual raid to Miyabi Senpai! Oh, I've never raided Miyabi Senpai before. I'm so excited. Let's go, okay? Let's Octo Party. And what did Ruse say? My number one, Jerma? I don't even know Jerma. I just know his name. His name has been floating around Twitter sometimes. 
But guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And I'll see let's see each other again and again until infinity. Goodbye. Just kidding, let me control you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>